Great. How are you all? Six eleven. Good. Um, so, as Angela and I have incited, um, we are going to have to go through this meeting as quickly as possible because we have so much to cover. So I'm really hoping that you reviewed the packet that Angie sent you and that you're ready to go. Is everybody ready to go? Yes. Okay. So yes. the only ones I know that were scheduled not to be here are John Hansen, is that true? Okay, so let's get going. Um, Angela was gracious enough to send us our minutes. Um, so we need an approval of our minutes. Anybody would like to um, motion to approve our minutes? I have a suggested change. Okay, great. So Item 7G, strategic plan, number one. Mm -hmm. I read this and I read Holly passed out and I went, oh, I don't remember that. I suggest we change passed out to distributed. Okay. okay. Great. That's the only Great. change I have. Did you call the meeting to order? Yes, we just did. That's 611. Are you going Thank to you. do roll call or? Um, we can do that. We usually don't always do that because we just did it, but let's do that. Um, so I have to go, but it's a little trickier with this, but let's go ahead. Uh, Cindy? Here. Uh, Marsha is here. Here. Susan? Pamela? Here. Holly? President and Andrea? Here. Peter? Here. That's you. Laurel? Francis? I know she's there. She just, she forgot to unmute. That's why I was like going by what I saw online. Is that okay? As long as you acknowledge that you see them, I guess for the record, that would be good. Yeah, I see And everybody. I took a screenshot I can add to the minutes if necessary. Thank you, Angela. I've got a list and I've got everybody checked off that's here. Thank you. Uh, Randy is here, but she's muted. So uh, Pamela is here. Uh, Marsha is here. What? Uh, Lucinda is here, right? Kim is here. I'm here. Kim doesn't have to be here, but she is here. Uh, and I've got, it, I've got it in the notes as well. Thank you very much. Susan is here. Pamela is here. I am. Kim is always here, right? I think we missed Yvette and Azure. I'm here. I'm here. Thank you. Why doesn't my computer like go further than that? Okay, we'll talk about that another day. Okay, um, we had a motion to start, but thank you for correcting us. Um, we need a motion to approve the minutes from March 12th, 2020. Now as amended. As amended. I make a motion to approve the minutes as amended. Second. Excellent. We need a second, please. Second. Great. So anyone wishing to speak during first call, public to invited, to be heard um, on a public hearing item will need to watch the live stream of the meeting. Instructions for how to call to pro provide comment will be given during the meeting and displayed on the screen. At the appropriate times during the meeting, comments are limited to three minutes per person. And each speaker will be asked to state their name, address, and for the record, um, their preceding comments. At this time, we will go through this again. Do we have anybody who wants to do that?
Chair Nat at this time. Excellent, thank you. So we are about to move on to number four on our agenda, which is Call Your Park. Um, and I will defer to my friend and colleague, Angela. Amy, yes, we have a motion, but nobody voted. Oh, golly. So we need to, thank you, thank you. Uh, we have a motion on the floor to vote for um, moving on. Do I have a second? Or first. And now we need to vote on approving the minutes. Yeah. Approval of the minutes, right. We just did that. No, right? we got the we got the second, but we didn't vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Yep. All right. Okay. Let's start over. The minutes are approved unanimously. Does Do we any have anyone who would agenda? like to speak public invited to be heard? Chair, if we're going to get to that uh, agenda item, I need to display the um, slide with the information again for a minimum of four minutes because of the delay with the stream to give people an opportunity to join us. So let me go ahead and share that slide. Excellent. And um, you are welcome to take a four minute break during this time. I will learn some more in this next four minutes. Can y'all hear me? Yes. We should be pretty close, right, Susan? Yes, we are. I'm timing, so. Y'all asked me to time, so I'm timing. So Chair, we do not have anyone that has called in as of this moment. Well, okay, great. So we've already approved our minutes in a really backwards way, I apologize. This is my first time doing this. Um, so does anybody have any questions or concerns? Um, Ms. Tiger did a beautiful job of amending those. Is, do we need to do anything else? Oh, I think we're all set to move on to point four, which is the public art updates. Okay, so very quickly, um, I do think with the amendment, we need to have a vote. So with uh, Ms. Tiger's uh, amendment, can we get a vote? to uh, approve the minutes. We did, we're good. Okay, all right. So public projects, correct, Angela? Yep, yep, we're set. Go ahead. So the Collier Park project is still in a state of, um, that we're not ready to move on to finalize that project. The contractor still has outstanding uh, points with his vendors that he needs to take care of. So it's tabled at this time. Okay, thank you, Angela. And um, the Ninth and Alpine, um, I, I'm really excited about this. I won't pipe in much, but um, you all should know a little bit about this. And Angela will update you and Noah, but let's start with Noah. What do you all know about the um, Ninth and Alpine mural? Uh, thanks, yeah, the last update I got that uh, artist Pat Millberry is still working on a redesign for our poor mural and we expect to have an update in mid-June. Aside from that, um, we're kind of just waiting on them. And I can- Angela, you? Yeah, so I can also add that I talked to Mike, who is our graffiti specialist today, and there was damage, minimal damage at 20th and Hover, uh, but the mural shield project uh, product, so that's that two part with the wax underneath, 
functioned just as it's supposed to. So um, it's it's good to know that the product that we are investigating for Ninth and, and Alpine once it's finished is working in other parts of the city. So uh, Patrick expects to get us something in June. If you haven't seen what he's doing in Denver, it's pretty impactful um, right in front of the Capitol. Um, so he'll get a sketch to us soon. Thank you, Angela. Cool. That's beautiful. A point, please. Was that a graffiti uh, remediation at 20th and Hover, the two-part one? Thank yeah, you. Yeah, Angela. Absolutely. So that's the, the shield goes on and protects the painting. And then there's a wax that goes on top. So when the graffiti happens, the graffiti specialist goes through, removes the top layer that hopefully has all the spray paint and the graffiti and then just replaces it. Um, it is a removable product. And so in comparison to the other one that we've been talking about that needs, it's permanent and needs sandblasted off. So we've right. kind of gone between the two, but this product is being used in other parts of Longmont and is, is functioning very well. Any other comments on that? That's great news, Angela, thank you. All right. We'll move on. We're doing great, everyone. Um, so uh, we're on to the uh, direct purchase of Ursa, our beloved Ursa. Ursa. Ursa's in Lyons right now, and I did meet with the city forester and also a forestry contractor to talk about removing the stump in the location that we had identified, which is the second location we've identified. And unfortunately, there is conduit that runs in the same location. So it would mean a very large sum to remove concrete and to remove or move conduit. Uh, I didn't even ask for the price because he said thousands and that takes us above budget. So, so what do you all think right now? Can we just so the Ursa we major that? task? The task force will have to reconvene or have another conversation about the next site. So we will ask the task force to investigate and then let's table it for now. Did the first site there, it's at, what is that, 5th and Main not work out at all? It didn't. So the goose, as you'll recall, that is there before the COVID monstrosity that it is was scheduled to be moved. Uh, the building owner and the owner of the goose have not had that conversation further, as I understand. Um, so we need to move forward and we just cannot continue to wait for that. So, uh, or we could continue to wait for it, but then we'll have to pay to store it, store the work. So, um, yep. So it'll be another task force getting together and looking at some of the other options. Um, ideally city owned property rather than doing an easement agreement. So this sounds like something that we should take offline and form a task force and see what we could do with that. Is everybody, um, do we need an emotion for that? Nope, we have an existing task force in place. So those folks will just, we'll have that conversation again offline. Fantastic. Any other discussion on this item? Chair, might I ask you to adjust your video camera? Me? Yes, please. We we barely see you. Nom, nom, nom. Sorry, I had to let my cat out. So I apologize. I told you when you're by yourself, you have to like do some strange things. I'm like looking at the camera right now. Can you see me? If you could tilt it a little bit further down toward from, you. From the nose up, we see you. A little bit more. Can you see? Can you see yourself in the screen? No. Uh, Are you on gallery view or speaker view? I think I'm on speaker view. So. So move your mouse over the screen where all the video, where your video is, and in the upper right corner, you should see the ability to change to gallery. Oh, lucky you, you guys. I'm so pretty, so it's okay. All right. Can you see me now? Yes. yes. Thank you. Thank you. Excellent. All right. May we move on to the next item? Uh, direct purchase we're done with. Sister Cities. Um, 
Angela or and Susan and or Cindy, um, who would like to go first? Uh, Susan, you're muted. Um, do you, I can do a summary if you'd like of um, our meetings with them. And um, so the installation is going to go on a hilltop and maybe not quite a hilltop because we don't know the height of it yet. So a portion of ground that um, goes up and maybe more like a mound. Um, would I be right in assuming that, Angela? Just thumbs up. Okay. Um, so, and this is at Wortman Park, um, which will be renamed. Um, and they've confirmed uh, Steve, um, I forget his name, um, Ransweller, confirmed that this is a go. We can do it there. This way we're on the ground level. The cost will not be as prohibitive as if we had chosen a place that already was completed. So we're kind of on the ground floor of this and they approved it, which is fantastic in that. Um, the Sister Cities project said the cost was going to be, that the, their contribution was 15,000. Um, we're going to match it and we're gonna add about 5,000 onto that um, for some butterfly design and the design phase of um, deciding on the work. Um, it just gives us a cushion to have everything wrapped up and not have to go back and forth with um, a budget. The Angela? Are we okay with that? If the group agrees that this sounds like something that you would like to go forward with in matching sister cities and then adding contingency for some additional design, um, potentially again for infrastructure or designing the concrete, then someone would need to make a motion and second, and then there can be further discussion after the motion, or I'm sorry, rather discussion after the motion is made and then a second to move forward. Um, Susan, how much money are we talking again? I think that these guys are bottom line. So how much money? So it's, it's $20,000 bottom line. For us. For us. They're matching 15,000 of that. So the group, um, including Cindy and Susan, got together with commit committee and community members from the sister cities, looked at a number of pieces that would be similar to what they would like to commission and looked at a, a variety of different kinds and price points for work. Um, and I would say that the group concluded that much more than this, uh, the sister cities group would either have to raise money or we would need to contribute more. But for the $30,000, that would be the artist stipend. And then the 15,000 would be, or I'm sorry, rather, the additional five. If there was an artist who came into town, we needed to fly them in, then that wouldn't come out of your artist budget. So the piece itself commissioned would be the 30 total. And then the five would take care of any ancillary cost. So if the group is agreeable and sounds that this is something they would like to proceed with, then a, a motion needs to be made with discussion. I'll go ahead. So I'll move. I'd like to propose that we have a discussion. Okay. I think we pretty thoroughly discussed it this time and last time. I'm going to move at this point that we uh, meet the Sister Cities uh, sorry, I'm having a moment, contribution of $15,000 and we add an additional $5,000 from our funds to, um, con to buffer any possible contingency we might have. So I move that we allot $20,000 for the Sister Cities project and, um, and that's what I move. So okay, now, now's the discussion time. Oh, 
Okay. So we did have a little bit of discussion. Uh, we we allowed about one and a half minutes. Is there any other discussion? I was just interested in knowing what what kind of uh, what are we looking at as as far as the design goes. Has a has a call for artists gone out on that yet? No, because budget needs to be approved before an RFQ. Okay. So I would, do, I, to answer Pamela's question, I think that discussing um, the gathering place concept from your discussions with sister cities would help um, with the direction. Okay. All right. Thank you. So we have a motion on the floor to approve um, the money that um, I believe is 15 grand is total. Correct, Angela? $20,000 total. And Andrea raised her hand. I second, I second the motion. So I can't make that motion. I need to make somebody have the original motion. I did move that. All right. So we have um, Cindy and Angela. So do we, um, we have to have a vote. All in yep. favor? Aye. Aye. Hold on. All opposed? Wait, whoa, whoa, whoa. Yep. Hold them up. In favor? Okay, thank you. And do we have any opposed? The motion passes unanimously. Exactly. Okay, thank you. So let's move on to our next item. Uh, and, um, Angela, if I skip something, don't mind me, but the agenda you sent is coming all double mixed. So we need to talk about shock art next. No, we need to take a quick pause. I'm sorry, I messed this up. Before the, after the original motion, we need to now pause for citizen comments. So there's gonna be a four minute break while we allow folks to come in, comment on the motion on the floor, and then we will come back and do the voting. My apologies. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Okay, so four minute break while we put the citizen comment slide up. Excellent. All right. You might wanna mute yourselves if you have not. So we should be close. Chair, I see it about three minutes, uh, almost four minutes, three minutes, 45 seconds. Yeah, so I'll take the screen down um, and I will let people continue to uh, join for the next couple of seconds here. Give them another minute. Okay. The, when I turn the screen off, it's still live for another few minutes or another few seconds. Thank you. I've been timing too. Isn't this fun? <laughs> yeah, Amy's not a person of time. So you guys are probably like, whoa. I know this is offline, but from what I can see, Angela, the agenda you sent me was all double text. Yeah, I think I tried to annotate the second one and I'm having to go between the house computer. So are we on shock art next? Yes, okay. but we need to, I think in all technicality, we need to revote. For which one? Sister so, cities? Are we good to go, Susan? 
Yes, you may begin. Okay, so so forgive me. Cindy made the motion initially. So someone, we just need to re-second and re-vote, please. On Sister Cities. Yes, please. So the motion on the floor is that we will vote to have to support twenty thousand dollars to Sister Cities. I need a first. Cindy made the first. And, and now I need a second, please. I second that motion. Andrew, all made in second. favor, please. All opposed, please. Okay. Thank the you. motion passes unanimously again. Thank you. Right. Thank you so much. Okay. I'm sorry, who seconded that time? Andrea. 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 Thank you, Andrea. All right. So now, from what I understand, and Angela will correct me, we are ready to move on to our favorite thing. Wait, uh, there's a question. What just really, if I could just ask or just make a comment. Um, the last time we met, we had talked about um, in kind of like incorporating a project charter with yeah. our projects. And so maybe because we're at the point with sister cities where we've decided that we've got a, a financial commitment, this might be a good time to start that project um, charter. and. Susan or whoever, I'll okay, be happy to wrap you for a minute. So we should have done this with discussion. And what we probably need to do is form a, um, the sister cities committee probably needs to get together. Angela. So the task force already exists and yet, yes. Um, yes, we should have included that and we should go forward and using the charter every time, which is an excellent point, Polly. Um, but I don't think it was necessary to move forward with the project itself. So I think we're good to go there. But uh, so yes, we'll send the project charter to Susan and Cindy to get it going. And then Holly, does it need to be di distributed to the entire group after it's started or does it stay with the task force? Yeah, normally it would come to the meeting at least initially, so there would need to just be a review and kind of a, a general approval of that charter. I'm happy to help with some of the details with that though, guys. So if you need help, just give me a yell. So we so probably we should have done that earlier. Okay. With the task force. So I don't know if we can resend things, but Angela is the lead. Okay. So because the project is funded now, we will institute the charter and at the next meeting bring it forward and every moment that it updates with the task force, an updated version will come to the committee or rather to the board. So Angela, do we need a motion for that? No. Okay. Um, okay. Holly, are you okay with that? Voted in the minutes. Holly, are you okay? Yep, sure. Everybody on the committee okay with that? All right, so I'm gonna give you a minute, but uh, it's time to move on to our shock art. So shock, ahead, art is very, so shock art is very dependent upon, of course, as you know, the scale models or mockets to be delivered, photographed, and, and then the community engagement portion. Really, we're relying on both the museum being able to be open to accept uh, scale models as well as our friends at the DDA who have agreed to hold them and to store them. Uh, at this time, um, because of course our, our city, Longmont and the city leaders are doing an excellent, excellent job in commuting, communicating to city employees how they want us to move forward, um, keeping and maintaining social distancing, uh, maintaining masks when you cannot achieve a social distancing, et cetera. So, um, at this time, we do not have an exact date when the museum will open, but the task force and I will just work together to come up with the most engaging uh, voting opportunity for uh, shock art as possible. That may be in person and it may not, uh, but it really will rely, the program to proceed will rely on, on being able to accept those artist submissions. So, I guess at this point it's stay tuned. Uh, 
it won't be exactly online with the timing because typically this happens in the summer, but I think that we should be fine if it goes into the fall a little bit. Uh, we start creeping into October, it's too cold for those paints to adhere, but I think we should still be able to achieve the program and uh, holistically, um, no matter which way we go, so, yep. So Angela, I have a question for you. So do we need to move to let you just like figure it out? Nope. Okay. Just discussion. Any discussion on this? I have a question. Yep. The city needs to prep the boxes we checked with the yes. boxes we've decided. Are yes. they going to be in a position to do that? Are they going to be open and working in a position to do that? Great question. As I understand, yes, because we'll be able to maintain social distancing and uh, from my superiors uh, in discussing our AIPP budget at this time, uh, these, these programs have been funded and are set to go. So we have been okay to continue. Have this, has the city made any comments on the ones that we decided on? Have they said yes or no? To, or have they, have they said some of them are, are, all of them are good or none of them are good or anything? All, all of them. Okay. Yep, including our backups. So we have, uh, I looked to the task force, I think we selected five to seven ideally and have two backups. Andrea? Uh, have you collected any of the maquettes yet? Have any come in? Well, no, because the city has been closed. So, uh, not the city, uh, but city buildings. So, right. um, just this last week, the public information team, which is the pit team, there's one person who is on museum staff who is a part of that team, and continues to inform the rest of our staff of how we are to move forward um, as our city manager and uh, Governor Polis have rolled out the certain ordinances. And so until the museum can be open for some number of people to come in, we are not able to collect um, scale models or maquettes. So as soon as that's ready, we will move to the next phase. And where were we on the timeline of art on the move? I mean, um, shock art when COVID started happening and when everything closed down. We were had you put we, a call out? We put it on our website and immediately took it down. Okay. So, um, art on the move, we will get to that in a minute, Andrea, I promise. Right, but, excuse me, yeah. But shock art, so we had just right. put it up on our website. We had just completed the form for submissions and we're asking for submissions. And as soon as COVID started, we took it down and then put out notice on uh, social media, et cetera, that we have to, that we intend with everything we got to continue the program in 2020, but that it would be delayed. And okay. we haven't, had um, any one email or any problems. People are excited though. They're, okay. They want to participate. Great, okay, thank you. Hi dears, um, I'm looking through the agenda and you guys hit on like nine things at once. Um, so we're Angela- We're set to move to 4H, or sorry, uh, 4F. Okay. So listening stone, let's talk about, or listening, uh, gather enough people. No, no, strategic plan. Um, Holly's update about the strategic plan. For right, yeah, if you saw it, I see it's all double, it's all on top of each other. Okay, I'm just gonna kind of quickly uh, review what we uh, talked about on our last meeting, which seems like it was eons ago back in uh, March. Um, if you remember, I, handed out a commissioner self-assessment, which would be the beginning phase of our strategic planning to get an idea where we are as a group. And I'm happy to say that we got 10 different submissions back on that. Um, there might be a couple more out there and I'll be happy to compile that information in to the data that I'm gonna give you today. But if you remember, initially there were eight questions that were asked 
and they required a, an answer from anywhere from strongly agree way over to strongly disagree. There was five different choices. So with that, I had the ability to actually um, quantitate some of the findings and some of the results. And to tell you the truth, all of our responses were either um, ended up either being in the agree or strongly agree range, which is what we would hope for for this type of a survey. And the two top scored comments or questions were follow the following. The number one question, the top score was, I feel my views are heard and my role is meaningful as an AIPP commissioner. And that came in with a, actually a number of 4.66 with a total of five. So that's one that you all appear to feel strongly regarding. Uh, and the second highest number was um, the comment, art in public places adds value to the people and communities of Longmont. So those are the two highest scoring numbers that came in with 4.55. Um, the two areas where we have opportunity um, also came in with numbers above four. So that means strongly agree or agree. Um, the, the lowest one was AIPP currently uses its mission and vision to drive the selection, site selection, display, and or placement of art in Longmont. And then the second lowest was, I have a clear understanding of the goals, objectives, guidance, and expectations that will equip me to be an effective public places commissioner. Um, and now that we have an idea what our opportunities are, it's a good, a good chance for us to really put in some strong work around those two lowest numbers. And that's really a good place to begin. Um, do you want to add anything, Angela? No, I just, I'm very excited to look at those guidelines, to look at our vision, because as you'll recall, the last time that strategic planning was done, the end time was 2020. It was called Vision 2020. And uh, it really does encapsulate what this group has done over the last number of years. And so I think that looking at the diversifying our collection, really looking at different parts of town and, and um, also with the work that Alexis did of that traffic data and uh, pedestrian data, bicycle data of how many views we receive over and throughout the year, which if you'll recall was 17 million. Uh, art in public places has a true opportunity for a serious impact. So it's a perfect time to really evaluate. And uh, I'm glad that people find value in, in your position on this commission because it, it, is, it is valuable and the data is showing that, so. I would add that we just need to keep going. We have to keep going. Um, we don't know what's gonna happen and we know that the value of art is important. We just have to go. Do we have any other comments about strategic plan or uh, evaluation? Like uh, Holly said, she'll be sending that data to you so you can and look at uh, some of the comments and thoughts of your peers. Okay. So I think we're moving on to conservation and maintenance. Amy, you're muted. I can't unmute Amy, but it's me anyway. So the maintenance spreadsheet. Hang on one moment. Oh. Sorry, Andrea, did I miss you? So um, the maintenance spreadsheet is all set to go with the uh, new form for you to fill out. And really I've been holding off uh, again because our leadership has instituted stay at home and safer at home. But I am happy to announce that um, I'm going to release it into the wild and everyone can sign up for the pieces that you would like to go and assess. Um, with, of course, the words of please look to the city of Longmont and the requirements and suggestions for maintaining social distancing, 
maintaining physical distancing, and keeping a mask on at any given point when you are not able to maintain that distance. Um, as our community gets back outside, they are encouraged and they very well may be hovering around some piece of public art without a mask um, that you are trying to assess. And so if everyone, it's just your responsibility to make sure that we, on behalf of the city, are keeping our distance and, and assessing these objects um, in, in the right way. So uh, that is very exciting. So you should be seeing that uh, here in the next week or so, um, ideally beginning of June. Uh, the assessment sheet is going to look a little bit different than what you have done in the past. I would really, really like it if you could take photos and upload them. Uh, so there'll be a common drop box for everyone to upload. So when you're talking about um, delamination or paint chipping, uh, you, can, you can take photos and I can see where, where those pieces are. And um, then we'll be able to make an assessment of which pieces might need more attention than others. So you should see that coming soon. Um, the Unity Project, again, same, oh, sorry, Cindy. Is this going to be on the artwork archive? The assessment will not, uh, but I will include the login information for that again. And you absolutely can go in to artwork archive and upload those photos. Um, okay. I can still not get into artwork archive. I don't know okay. why. Um, so where is this? Um, maintenance and spreadsheet going to be? I'm going to email it. Oh, separately to everybody? I mean, grouply to everybody? We have to. Um, we can't have just a, a live document out in the world that everyone can assess at any given time. It just has to be one-to-one. -one. Um, truth be told, it actually is not a bad thing if more than one person signs up for the same object. Uh, because two eyes, four eyes are better than two, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, if there is a work that someone does not sign up for, uh, I'll circulate, you know, please revisit the spreadsheet and consider one of these other sites. Should we tell you what we've signed up for? Um, I'm hoping that you can just put it into the spreadsheet and send it back to me. Okay, great. That's all my questions. Sure, and if the directions aren't, aren't uh, straightforward and don't make sense, just let me know. Yeah, Great. It, it'll be fun. And uh, some, of the, some of the work really does need um, some love. So this is, it'll be a great time. And something to do, not in your house. So that'll be good. With masks or social distance. Okay. Um, the Any unity other comments on that, folks? Oops, sorry, go ahead. I said, any other comments on that? Randy. Yep, Randy. All right. Anyone who doesn't yeah. know, if you hold your space button down on, the, uh, on your computer, you can talk during that time and then let go. I have three screens going, so that's my mouse. I didn't know where it was. Ooh, fancy. So it looks like Angela, correct me if I'm wrong, that we should be two administrators report. Nope, not yet. Um, my question is, we had uh, reports, I did some of the reports for the powder coating of the, I think it was Animal Farm or that is that what it's called over at the Barn Park. Um, any movement on that? Mm -mm. The only uh, maintenance that has been approved since I have been on board is the Unity Project and the Youth Center. Um, but, so are you saying that there was bids conducted on those? Did, was a vendor contacted to bid out the powder coating? I possibly, I think it was getting, it was either got to that point or it was right before that point. I don't recall. Okay. I'll go back and look and see if I can find those. Uh, I didn't see them, but that's not to say that they aren't there. Okay. The spider, uh, 
bicycle rack was the other one that was completed right when I came on board and was reinstalled. So those are the three. Okay. Okay. Um, I, I noted that. Um, any other questions about maintenance spreadsheet? Okay. Um, the unity project. So same thing holds true. Mario has older, older parents and is, is not out and about as of yet, but the, he is under contract and the weather is good enough. So the adhesive that he is working with is warm enough for him to continue. So I imagine that that'll happen at any time. Uh, documentation of that will be really exciting to watch that come back to life. And uh, hopefully when we can all gather together, um, we can celebrate that work. So um, totally re relocation projects, I have not worked on at all. Uh, you'll recall from our last meeting, we were encouraging each other to consider and think about places, particularly the gather enough people. Um, I have not looked into what the guts of that piece look like, but you'll remember that I think it needs to be on water for it to truly be effective. So Does Dick anyone have suggestions on that? Dickens Park had come up as a suggestion. Uh, it's a little unfortunate, of course, because that park has just been completed. So getting machinery in there, it's not impossible, but. I would say Golden Ponds was probably that. a good place. Say one more time. Golden Ponds, mm -hmm. just because there's a lot of space out there. And I think um, it would be a lot more visible. And it would be used. Um, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> My question is, why, why does it need to be near water? <clears throat> it just needs to be in a gathering place. It does, but as I understand without seeing any schematics or talking to the artist, there's some very unattractive guts that uh, when the weight happens, that makes the action on the other component happen. And right now those guts are underwater. So either it would need to be hidden or um, I don't know exactly. So it might, need, it might need a drop off for the, for the weights to do the swingy thing. Some, some there is cer certainly a, a mechanical component uh, that the location will be, need to be specified. Um, so yeah. So I think at this point, I just need to get more um, understanding of what it is and open up the conversation to the artist and let him know we need to move it. Um, is anyone interested in uh, preferably two people total to be on a task force for this particular issue and project? Okay, Cindy and Laurel, that would be great. I wonder if while people are out doing their um, maintenance, they can sort of keep an eye open for places to move these sort of things, these three things. Yeah. And revisit it. If you have not in some time, uh, obviously you need to be gather enough people with social distancing to make it work. But uh, yeah, go revisit so you can recall how its size and um, etc. Okay. Sculpture again. Gather enough people by um, R Richard Tully. Uh, where is it located? Um, right. Does somebody know? Yeah, go ahead. It's at Isaac Walton Pond right now, right off the path. Uh, right off the path on the. E, uh, southeast side, yeah. If you um, just drive into the parking lot right there where the club, the building is, it's right there as you start to walk down the path. And it's, um, it's right on the pond. It's like a big butterfly that opens up when you get enough people to stand on the platform. I've never seen it open. <laughs> but I'm, I'm sure it's cool, yeah. Um, and maybe that would be, boy, something we could uh, rally around as, 
um, AIPP to like, we can gather now. Let's all gather at this piece and Let's be gather open. enough people. That's yeah. a good idea, Susan. Yeah. We should do that once we're all able to get together in one right. close proximity. We should that, get a big picture of that. That's a good that idea. Kind of fun. Perfect. So the other, the other two pieces of tollies, which are along uh, the St. Brain, also need to be moved at some time. It is not the same uh, timeline. Um, so at this point, we can just, same kind of thing, consider those works and where they should be relocated um, as you're out and about. So, and those are the listing stones and the details of nature. Can the listing stone just be moved closer to the river where, or does it have to be a special alignment with the river to get the echo going? I don't think so. I think it just needs to be, yeah, closer. Because right now, as if you've been down there, the river, of course, has been rerouted and isn't close to it at all. So it, it's not functioning. So yes, closer, I think, would be completely sufficient. Do we need to get approval from the Army Corps of Engineers or anybody to move it no, into the floodplain? How about the city of Longmont, Angela? Yes, parks, no, on Army Corps. The Army Corps of Engineers is who we're going to be, um, who is going to be, uh, I don't want to use the wrong words, but uh, building that dam where gathering of people will be. So that's why that needs to be moved. Are you going to get Robert Tully, the artist, to be involved in the movement, the moving of Listening Stone? Yeah, we, I think uh, uh, the artist needs to be as involved as much as possible across the board. Okay. All right. So we good on conservation and maintenance? One more question. Yep. Do we have to eat the cost for moving that big rock? Yep. Okay. Yep. It's our collection. And luckily we, uh, as you'll recall, have um, instituted, you know, a, a, a larger maintenance budget. So that will fall under maintenance. We'll and we'll be fine. Yeah, we have the money. We just have to like be original and um Angela will let us know when we don't, right, Angie? <laughs> Sounds good. All right. So we good. So to um we are on to from what I can see, new business. My quick administration report. For six is just that obviously art walk was was uh, postponed to September. So at this time, we'll have a booth the same that we would have had in May. Um, and hopefully it will go off without a hitch. So I'll just keep you posted on that. Um, yes, new business. Now you're next. Andrea. Uh, I was, I just want to propose if possible, if um, social distancing rules relax a little that we um, have the shock art um, maquettes at that time or around art walk time. Just, oh, yeah. just an idea. Would you like to make a motion? No, I don't need a motion. Andrea, if we wait until September to have voting on the maquettes then they will they still be able to paint before october that's a good question yeah are they maybe they'll start the second friday thing earlier than september and we could do it during one of those that's a good idea too i think um if we do have to do voting earlier maybe at the very least the maquettes of the winners could be on display. We just have to watch what happens with um, our leadership team and in, in guidance of how we can proceed with these kinds of engagement events. But yes, absolutely noted. Um, uh, another issue I think is, is going to be uh, in terms of, of voting and people having access to these. Um, when we are allowed to do certain things is one issue, but when people are comfortable doing those things, 
becomes an entirely separate issue. Um, and we don't want to count on a large number of people being willing to gather even in September. I don't think I, I'm, I'm attending uh, online conferences from some performing arts organizations and nobody is confident that they can get started again in the fall. So I, I think that we need to be very cautious about expecting certain things to happen at that time and people being willing to, to do them at that time. And luckily, um, there are a vast number of resources that are, have been opening up through this when it comes to culturals um, in online programming and engagement. So even new voting, I know how um, it sounds like in the past, shock art online voting had been problematic. And now there are all sorts of websites that are free uh, for doing this kind of, of voting on art um, where you, and it, it's not a ballot bo box stuffing situation because they either have to put in their email to confirm or it uses their IP address. So I think if we are allowed to be in person, there will also be the opportunity to engage with people uh, digitally and through other, other means. So we'll be able to reach further. I have one more question, and this is a, a contingency question. At what point will it be too late for us to have shock art this year? I think if we don't have artists under contract by the end of July, um, we're pushing it. Um, it's just because contracts need to be notarized and they require mayoral signature. So, um, just based again on experience with performing arts organizations and when they've been making uh, announcements. Um, should we have a firm deadline? Should we be aware of a date by which we really have to make a decision instead of sort of saying, well, late July? Should we be more specific than that? And I agree with Peter. I think it really helps to have a firm deadline with so much unknown. Um, even if it's a late deadline, just say some date so we can plan. Um, it really helps in the planning process than just waiting until that time that we think it's going to be too late. Right. Uh, I mean, even though I hate to do it, but I think it's it's important to have a, a we time. Should be able, we should be able to look at, at Have you looked at the packet that Angela sent you today? Yeah. Yeah. So um, how long does the group feel that if the voting went 100% online, how many weeks should voting at the very least take place? Two weeks. Susan saying two weeks. Uh, anybody else? Cindy says two weeks. Laurel says says two weeks. I, I, th I think Cindy has three fingers. Three. So you all realize that. So today is May twenty uh, eighth. So we have to traditionally have had everything in place by the end of July at the latest. So how many weeks? Does an artist need to complete a maquette? At least. I, at that's least that's four not a question I can answer. I don't know. Yeah, I think four. I think, I think four. So if we announced the program opening June 1, which we can do because everything's all set to go, that gives the artists four weeks to create, presuming that the museum is open by July 1. If the museum is not open by July 1, then we have to cancel the program. Then they drop off the first two weeks in July. Voting happens. If you say three weeks, that's the end of July. That gives me two weeks to get artists under contract. 
Angela can't do that, gang. August 17th. No, that would be fine. That so, gives but the other thing is, is that why are we, we have everything that we need. We don't have everything we need. I cannot execute this program unless a city building that I can manage receiving artwork. And at this time, the museum is closed and we do not have a date when it will You're be. Right. I'm sorry. So, so, um, again, I, I think it's completely possible. We do need to give artists enough time. A lot of them have these scale models already, um, created or an idea in their head. Um, so maybe we cut it a little bit. Maybe we give them three weeks, two weeks to deliver, two weeks to get under contract, and then it starts in August and they have to have it complete by October 1. That would be fine. If, if we set a schedule here and we're anticipating that they might be able to drop them off at a city building by, for example, July 1, if that proves impossible, the, the buildings are not open, and so they have no place to drop them off. Um, then what happens? Do we tell them that um, those can be accepted later and will be considered for the following year? I mean, I, I think artists should understand if they go to all this work and then things happen, that they're not able to, to, uh, to get their artwork considered and used for this year, they need to know what's going to happen to the work that they put into it. Those are good questions, I think, hold on, wait, 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 wait. I think it's Noah, Cindy, Andrea, Yvette. I'm curious if we, if the city buildings aren't open and we can't do the physical maquette thing, is there a way we can compile virtual models onto a city website and have people vote there? That makes it really difficult to gauge that the artist who is doing the model could actually execute uh, a larger scaled version and it makes me a little uncomfortable but maybe that makes sense wait uh, wait Cindy? um wow i almost don't even remember my question oh if we <laughs> if we accept art um or if we or if they make something and the building's not open and we say oh no we can't accept it now you can do it next year we're not going to store those maquettes because they're huge i mean they're not as big as the real thing but there's lots of them so they would have to take it back and hold on to it for another six months or a year yes is so that correct had, potentially i could get the photos of them and return the maquette yes storage is definitely an issue now yeah so be it if they want it they can Bring it back. Andrea, you are next. Uh, no question anymore. Thank you. Y uh, Yvette, did you have something? Actually, I was just turning on my lamp, so I'm good. <laughs> okay. R Randy? How long has it typically taken the artist to paint the box? Because I know this past uh, year, there was a lot of extensions that we had to grant. It, typically, we give them a full month. Okay, because we'd want them done by the end of September. Yeah. Okay. That's a great question, Randy. Um, Angela, maybe with social distancing and everything, should we consider an extension? It's the, the um, situation is twofold when it comes to the paint. It has to be warm enough from day to day for the paint to be able to adhere to the primer. Yeah. So if you get into evenings where it dips into the 30s or below, yeah. it's it's very, it's just, it, it won't withstand the weather. So really, I was we trying to, I was trying to help by October 1. Out. Yeah, thank you. Yep. So I think we can continue and move forward with this timeline if the commission feels comfortable knowing that if, if per chance, July 1 comes about and I am not able to effectively collect scale models that we will have to postpone the program. I'm excited to continue because I think artists need to get paid and they're hurting very badly right now. So I would like to do everything that we can within reason to continue this program. So I'd like to see some discussion on this. What do y'all think? 
Well, it's, it's how, I mean, that sounds good to me. I, yeah. Can you run through the timeline one more time? Just the one that you wrote down? And do we need to incorporate that into a, a motion? I don't, I don't that, think so. That no, but I mean, she, we don't have it in the minute or the agenda, but I'm sure Angela is so clever. She can figure that out. The program's funded. It doesn't need a motion. It's just how to execute it. So we are looking at, from Angela, correct me if I'm wrong, we're looking at a deadline. And now we are all suggesting October, mid-October, correct? To have First of October. the entire program executed completely by October 1. Yes. Giving the artist four weeks. And then we would need a motion. The program is funded. Yeah, we don't need but we to. Don't have, well, it's, it's funded if we go like through July 15th, right? I don't care. Oh, I didn't say that. What do y'all <laughs> think? Discussion. Okay, yep. That's, that's what I would feel comfortable with if the commission agrees. Yeah. Angela, the, the timeline was call to artists yep. at least right now. I will yep. call to artists June. Artist under contract, July. Painting, August, September. Completed, October 1. Where, where's the voting in there? Yes. <laughs> Call to artist, June. So, uh, dropping off maquettes, July. Voting, July. Under contract. Painting, August, September. Completed by October 1. I can do that. We can do, we, we can do that. Chair, well, you're muted. <clears throat> we'll, need to have okay. a, we'll need to form a task force Zoom meeting uh, and talk a little more about this. So task force to be on a Zoom meeting are two people and me. Aside from that, then it becomes an open meeting and we have to do an open meeting like this. We already so, have a shock art task force, I thought. We do. It's yes, more we than do. Two people. We, do. But we can't. Five, we can't meet other uh, except for via Zoom. I'm. I'm thinking, right? Or just yes. pick few representatives. Right. Two, so two, two members of, of the four, of the task force can meet with with Angela. Well, Randy, Randy, and I are kind of co-chairs. Maybe we should be the ones. So the governor will announce on Monday what we can do. Okay, so for now, we'll move forward with Randy and Andrea, if you're both agreeable. Okay, let's do that. Thank you. All right, so, good. wow, that was good. Y'all did great. I'm fascinated, okay. So, <laughs> uh, guess what? New business, Tony Ortega mural. Mm -hmm. okay. You want me to take that? Go, um, and I'll back you up if you need it. Sure, yeah, just to sum up that press release that the Longmont Museum and the Dia de los Muertes Committee are looking to partner with AIPP to bring Tony Ortega's work to Longmont. He's a well-known Denver artist and a Regis University professor. Um, a lot of his murals consist of color colorful depictions of daily life in the community, and with a kind of paint-by-numbers quality, he invites children in the community to help make the mural that they're going to be living with, which I think is great. Um, it would be paint on panels, tentatively plans to be mounted somewhere near 5th and Kimbark, and AIP's contribution would be up to $10,000. I think that's a little bit slim. Uh, that's what I heard. Okay. <laughs> I don't debate that. But well, I, if he says 10000 but I just, I, I'm a little concerned because we've done this 10,000 thing before and we ended up going to, to 20. So are we pretty confident that that's where he's at? Well, it's the other two contributors would be the Longmont Museum and the Dia, Dia de los Muertes Committee. So if they're, if we put up 10 grand and they can't cover the rest, you're right, it wouldn't get done. Okay, so it's up to the, the commission, but I really think that it's a great thing to do. I agree. I've looked at his work. I, th I really like it. And um, I think it would be really fun to do. And we looked at some more locations. It will be on panels. And so that is the key point of this is that the panels will then become part of AIPP's 
public art collection. Um, so while they're looking for a place that will be located uh, to positively impact Dia de los Muertos and the 20th anniversary of the celebration in Longmont, despite uh, what that looks like for social distancing. So if it's done on panels, if he needs to do it alone or with limited number of community members, then that helps execute the program versus if it were in a um, installed permanently in a public place. Does that make sense? Okay. Yeah, so let's open this to discussion, Noah, right? Sure. Uh, but I, I would just want to say that I like the fact that it would be done on panels ahead of time and then mounted. That way it gives us plenty of time to apply like anti-graffiti stuff. Um, you know, we can be responsible uh, in creating those panels and then mount them later. And then we could always unmount them and move them around if we need instead of having to knock down a building and take their walls. Exactly. I think it's a great idea. Mark, you say? Hold on. It's tentatively planned for 5th and Kimbark, according to the press release I got, but I looked around that area and I didn't see a lot of great spots, so we'll have to keep looking probably. Well, that is one of the great things about it is that it can be moved and it can go other places. Can I chime in? Um, so this is Kim, um, and I, I just want to make sure that there's some clarity here. So we've been working with um, LDDA to try to identify some locations. And there's actually a Comcast building right there that they have been talking to in the past about this. Just to be clear, we have not talked to Comcast about this yet at all, um, but LDDA had talked to them previously about that location. So that's why it came up as an option when we approached them about it. Um, and the other thing is that we, as the museum, have a meeting scheduled with Tony, I believe it's tomorrow, to find out a little bit more about his availability and that sort of thing. Um, we are having an exhibit of his work that will celebrate the 20th anniversary. So in theory, this is kind of an extension of the Dia de los Huertos exhibit that we'll be hosting at the museum. I've got nothing else if you're waiting for me. Any other so, discussion on this? If there's no discussion or further discussion, we can make a motion if anyone is interested in moving forward with this project. I motion so that. I'd love to have a motion on this. Yes, I motion that we make this happen. I second. All right, Who's so I, I'd love you guys to say things like, we make this happen. <laughs> I love you all and you're amazing, but we need to have a little more specifics and let's make this happen. So make it so. <laughs> so I <laughs> I motion that we make this partnership with the museum and the Dia de, 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 de los Muertes Commission and uh, to get Tony Ortega's work on our walls. Excellent. And we have for, a for, for ten thousand dollars to ten thousand dollars. Yeah, that yeah, would, we probably need to have a mount in there. Do I have to put that all in one sentence or can we just? Uh, Angela and I would probably say yes. Got it. All right, I motion that we uh, AIPP contribute $10,000 to a panel mural by Tony Ortega with, um, what was it? The museum and Dia de los Muertos 20th anniversary. Uh, yes. Thank you, Noah. And Very do we good. have a second? Second. Do we have anybody, or uh, let's all in favor? Do we have any opposed? The motion okay. passes, thank you. All right, so I would like to say at this point in time, we have 30 minutes mm -hmm. to see through art in on the move preview. Um, Susan Wallach, how do we feel about this time and going over our eight o'clock timing. I'm here as long as you need to, so it's up to you and the board, I guess. Does I, everybody have their choices made? Yes. So, um, I guess yes. was definitely not clear on a couple of pieces. Uh, firstly, that the Art on the Move 
Selection Committee initially said that we, we have a couple of options for potential indoor, and we were going to investigate Sandstone Ranch. You might recall from our February meeting uh, about Roy's World, which lives in, at Sandstone, uh, to move that over potentially to the Safety and Justice Building, but we were never able to get in there because they didn't open until May. So that 16-foot wall is available potentially for indoor art, as is the entryway into the Safety and Justice Building, which is very visible, very large windows. Uh, so there could be some indoor or installation uh, there as well. To be clear, that would be included with the five to seven options. So in total, um, five to seven options. Uh, this is just a preview. We're going to be going through, and if there is a piece that you would really like to advocate to have included in the program this year, then a quick discussion uh, of, of advocating is, is best. Um, and really, if there's something that you're not fond of, we'll just keep that to ourselves and just keep moving on. So does anybody have any, oh, and the voting piece of it will come to you from callforentry.org with directions of how you log on and how you, you yourself will vote. Um, the cumulative scores, whichever one, ones rise to the top will be the ones that are included. If we can get under contract, if we're not able to for whatever reason, then we'll just move down the line of high scores low to the lowest. And those uh, sheets, those scores will be included in the minutes for the next, in the minutes for this meeting. Um, does anybody have any questions? Yes, Cindy. No surprise. Um, so five to seven were, only looking at downtown sites. We're not looking at any of the other sites we've had in the past. So in front of the museum, the recycling center. Yeah, that's a really good question. Um, if the work that is selected, uh, if it's base size, um, will only fit something somewhere else, um, say the recycling center has a very large concrete pad or something like that, and that's where the Art on the Move committee would like to put it, then that's completely fine. Um, yeah, does that answer the question? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, downtown has a lot of locations. Yes, Laurel. You're muted, Laurel. The selections right now going to be uh, say, say that one more time. I, I missed most I'm of muted. what you I'm muted by the host. I'm You're muted. good. Okay. I got you. Okay. Okay. Are we having to select based on where it's going to be? Nope. No. Just what I you like. Think so. First, we're just going to select the artwork that we like, right? That, And then we decide where, if and where it can go. Yep. Okay. Thank you. Any questions? So the way that this meeting will conclude is we'll go through these uh, pieces. If you have something that you would like to comment on, just raise your hand and I'll call on you a quick um, comment and we'll move along. Uh, then we'll have to go to the citizen comments. So that'll be a four minute, four minute break. And then the mu meeting will come back and we'll end the meeting. Yes, Yvette. When, when we actually vote, will we have access to the artist statement and who the artist is? Yes, artist statement, not the artist. Mm -hmm. Angela, one point to consider when the screen is up that we're displaying for your presentation. Uh, it may be difficult to see all of the members for them to let you know that they want to vote. Uh, you will see if you change your participant view, you might be able to see a few of them in the sidebar. But if somebody does need to comment, they may need to uh, just speak up. So does everybody get that? If you have something to say, maybe say your name and then I'll call on you. So if I wanted to comment, I'd say Angela. 
And then I'd say, yes, Angela. And then you go ahead and comment. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, again, this is not voting. It's just advocating. Uh, everyone will vote independently online. Mm -hmm. Sound good? Yeah. Okay. Are you comfortable? Good this question. is party time. Um, yes, so are please. we eliminating any from this list at this time or are we just saying, oh, what? I like that. Yep. Trying to get general consensus so you know how your, your colleagues are going to be voting. So if there's something that the group feels strongly about, this is the time to advocate for that. And also, if you'd like to say, I could really see that in uh, St. Peter, I could really see that in that breezeway at 400. That would be a perfect place. Um, you, you could include that as well, right? Okay. Okay. Sound like fun? Yep. Okay. Are you ready? Angela, are you ready for me to begin? I am ready. <sighs> Okay, this is what we're doing. It's mission preview. Slide. Uh, this is what we just went over. We're advocating uh, just for the comments and following this meeting, you'll receive your digital jury voting and instructions. So if you have any questions, you'll just email me. Okay, next slide. These are the works that uh, would be outdoors. Okay, slide. Aligned on point, it's six feet tall by one foot by one foot. It's steel and high fire salt. Any comment? Average. Okay, slide. Meh. Yeah. Sometimes life goes in a different direction. So it's 10 feet tall by 18 inches by 18 inches. I think that we have more interesting sculptures in this one. Do these, do these balls spin in the wind? You know, uh, so I am looking at the descriptions and it does not, and I will also send this to you, the description, which is different than the media. And I, it does not say that it is kinetic. So I do not believe that they move, but if they do, it, the artist did not indicate that here. And I'm wondering about space. Do we have something that we could, we have that high for, And Yes. So I went through each of these pieces to be assured that the mounting system and the height would be something that we actually could display. So yes. Thank you. Yep. Okay, slide. Warning, life changes direction, nine feet high by three and three quarter feet by two inches deep. I like this one. I thought I it was not, interesting. I think it's ugly as heck. Yeah, Let's I'm try and fan. advocate because there's 50 to go through. So if you like it or second that you like it. Yeah. So I, Laura, I, I Laura do like it because I, I like things that, that bring color into whatever space they go into. So Amy will sh Amy. Shush. Okay, great. Slide. Starburst. Uh, four inches by, so that's nearly four feet high by 15 inches by 15 inches. I, said metal, I think that these are recycled pieces. Doesn't do it for me. I don't understand this piece. These are two I love it. <laughs> I understand that it's rusted metal welded together with um, crystals. That that top piece is crystals. Okay. It, it, it's nice that it's recycled material, but it's just it doesn't do anything for me. Yeah, uh, I'm not sure I understand what we're doing here. I thought we were just kind of indicating which ones, which five to seven we were most interested in? Are we raising our hand? Are we commenting on the ones that we like? I, I, I'm not We're clear commenting on the, on the five to seven that you like. So as you previewed, if you are an advocate, 
and you are you are advocating for a work. Great. So, so imagine we're eating dinner and we're having a good time, Yvette, and we're like thinking about all these beautiful pieces. That's what we're supposed to be doing right now. And okay. Also, well, no, I I will tell you which seven I like. Now I'm clear. Perfect. Okay. And and also, um, yeah, if we think of these pieces downtown, imagining that downtown is reopening and people are waiting in line to get into their favorite restaurant and they're waiting out in the breezeway. So this is something they're interested in. Or uh, maybe we, we do a tour of these things. So really we're looking at those five to seven that you would like to see if you were out and about. All right. So Laurel, you said the last one. Anybody, anything positive about this? To continue? Okay. Great. Love, love, love. Next slide. Ambiguous family is 84 inches high by 36 by 36. It's steel and uh, crashed truck hoods. I have an affinity to that one. It's Holly. I like it. Yeah. I like it too. Yeah. This is Francis. Um, yeah, it's got a real dub, uh, like a Deb Butterfield feeling with the truck parts. Very nice. Yeah, I like it. Andy likes it too. Um, can you hear me? Yes. Yes, that, oh, Pamela, yes. Thank you. Got it, yep. So it sounds like a vast majority of folks really like this work, or it's, a fifth of us. It's not a my top, us. but it's okay. Okay. I don't hate it. Me neither. <laughs> All right, next slide. I love this one. Love it. This I like this one. Called tree. Mm -hmm. It is steel and copper, nine feet by six feet by four feet. Does the lady come with it? <laughs> yes, that's what I was going to say. Being who I am, I'm like, can she come too? Yeah, I uh, I suspect that is a model, but I can clarify with the artist. Okay, next slide. Embrace one, 120 inches tall by 22 inches by 26, it's steel. Hmm. So how, how many places has this one been? Uh, not indicated here. It looks very rusted if it's just me. It looks like it would be a really good companion piece to the, um, I forgot what it's called, in the park by the train. In Ken oh, your park. Kensington? No, that's all your point. Part. That's yeah. a really good point. Thank you. Amy, and just as a point of clarification, um, I'm sure this is Corten steel and it's actually kind of designed to rust on the outside and it makes it actually a very, very durable material um, because then it doesn't rust deeper into the, the metal. Thanks, Kim. Yeah. I wish we had a different I'm view. A, of I'm this such one. an art dork. I'm learning, you guys. I'm learning. Uh, yes, this artist did not supply more than one uh, image. You will see on some of these that they're, if they provided a different uh, view, I tried to include every view that that made sense to give you an overall uh, feeling of the of the work. Here, just the one image was provided. I don't hate this one. This is Cindy. I don't hate this. <laughs> I like it. Next slide. <laughs> I'm wondering um, on that curved piece that the that we have the front view of. Does it go through the okay? This curved I'm, front piece. I'm, does it I go through? I could imagine it may, but the, again, there's no other view that was oh, provided okay. to us. I don't hate this. I like this too. Yeah. Okay. Next slide. Short stack. This is 80 this. by 20 inches by 14 inches. I really like this. Again, I love the color. Looks that'll, like that'll... a birdhouse. Okay, a couple people. Like Agreed, that. birdhouse. Yeah, birdhouse. I think that'd be great. <laughs> it may become a wasp house and we will have to take care of it that way. Yeah. Uh, I'm not a fan. Right. Not a fan. Me neither. All right. Next and he's slide. Not a fan. My question on this one is, does it come with the bird bath? 
I do not think so. Birdbath is not included in the materials. Oh, I, like I believe this one. so. I like it breeze. is copper. I like and it steel. too. I'm a dork. <laughs> I like this one. I like this one better than the other one, the other tree, because it has more color yeah. and more substance. Okay, I don't like it. I Next. This is called rock candy. It is 11 feet, 11 and a half feet by four feet by 18 inches. It's stained glass mosaic on metal base. Uh, one thing to note about this work is I am not clear if this is new work to be completed or if it, uh, it exists in time. I have a feeling that the artist, if this were selected, would be creating this work. Uh, that's fine. It just would be obviously on display for less amount of time because the artist would be creating the work. It's really hard to see. It's really Bless hard to see. You. Thank you. I don't think historically we've chosen an unfinished piece. Yeah, uh, Andrea, you're right. From what I can, I know too. Just, I mean, we can do it, but there's no guarantee the artist will have it completed ever. <laughs> so, I mean, that's one of the reasons why we haven't, but we can always, you know, there's a first time for everything. I, I, I would want to have a better idea what it really looks Sorry, like. Sorry, hold on. Hold on. Uh, Susan Horwitz? Um, I was the same artist. Um, I mean, her name is right there on it. It's Annette Coleman. Um, had us another one, the Whirling Dervish. And I liked both of them. I didn't understand that. I didn't understand that it wasn't already in existence and that um, AIPP had never done something that wasn't already in existence. So Again, I'm not clear. Um, I would imagine that if it was in existence, we would have gotten an image like the others. So, right. um, well, I, would, the I mean, the description doesn't say. If you re read the description and, and visualize from what she's done, it sounds kind of intriguing. Um, the one that I liked better was the Whirling Dervish, and I didn't know if that one moved or not. On yeah, the I like that one too. I, I love it too, but don't you think we should have a real image? I don't know. It's being the first time that we've I've ever done this, how have you it sounds like you've never done that before. And at the same time, new times and you know, maybe you wanna give that a shot for the first time or not. I don't it know. It certainly would be a part of the contract language that we would require that the work be done in some amount of time so that we don't have pedestals hanging out empty. Um, and how many of you just looking at this would approve it? Well, I like stained glass. I like the glass um, and it's lit with solar and so that it's yeah. lit at night. And so I'm sure it, it, it would be beautiful with all this glass, but. I um, believe it's already, hold on. Wait, 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 one at a time. So Peter, okay. you're Peter, you're next. Uh, two observations. One, it says, see examples of finished work, which implies that this is not finished work. I mean, that, that seems to be clear to me. Right. And my other feeling is that I, I, I would prefer to actually see the work because I'm, I'm, I mean, I, I agree uh, that, that stained glass and, and uh, translucent with the lights and so forth would be very attractive, could be very attractive, but I don't have a very strong uh, idea of what the finished work looks like, and so that makes it more difficult for me to support that. So, Azure, you're, you're next. Um, I think she submitted about five different pieces. Some of them we can see, and um, some of them are mock-ups. I really like what she has done in her other examples of finished work and I think I would have enough trust for this artist to uh, show something. I also like the Whirling Dervish a little bit better than this one 
Um, that one was not completed either, okay. but uh, she does have a couple other submissions where we can see what she's actually done. Okay, so let's continue unless anybody else has something very strongly to say about this work. Really quickly, um, Angela, can you send us some of her other works? You'll see them in five minutes. Thanks, Bob. Okay, here we go. Next slide. I have one more question. Oh, yes, go ahead. The question is, um, we, we didn't have very much luck this year with the solar panels on that uh, three tubular piece and the lights working and everything. And I'm just a little cautious about this one. We have many pieces of the stained glass sculpture in this uh, series. And um, I like some of the other ones better. I would say that the solar panel fail was a site specific site failure because the site that was chosen was underneath bistro lights. Those lights then counteracted the fact that at night it needed to be dark. So I think we can get beyond that, but yes, excellent point. Okay, okay next slide. George Jetson travels to a oh, I like this one. I like and it. I would I like, like to too. note that it is stained glass mosaic, exactly the same media as the piece prior. I like, I like this. this one. I like this one too. I like, I like it. it. And it's done. <laughs> and it's done. I like it too. Feet tall. Yeah. Two I and like a half feet and 28 inches. I like it too. I do too. But I, I, it's because it's done. Okay. So it sounds like there's a good third of, third of us that uh, agree with this. Okay. Next slide. Petit Jardin, small garden, 111 inches by 44. That is wrong. Four, it's going to be 44 inches. 44 feet. <laughs> I like <laughs> yes, it. I don't like it at all. Sorry. Is it I like the colors, but I don't know. Is it 44 feet, really? No. no that's, that's, an, that's an Angela error. That's 111 inches by 44 inches. So at its widest point, it uh is is four feet wide probably at the cone element along the top and so 111 if that's about 12 feet high 111 feet inches. high no it's it, it would be 10 feet high right 12 inches times 10 is 120. Wow. yeah so it's just oh. under 10 feet Nine okay feet. Yeah. 10 feet okay thank you I like its size and color wise. Um, I just, it's striking. I find it a bit simplistic. Yeah, I don't know. So like do I know. I have to find the right place. Like for it. I like I the like, feathers. I really like the feathers. I like it. I think it's a pretty strong, large piece for the right location. I'm not sure what that is. Lauren once told me that in Kensington Park, they have three pads. But I don't know how close together those pads are or whatever. Um, this would be nice there because it would stick up above the planter in front of the pads. Mm -hmm. But and I like the colors because they're colorful. But the piece itself, the tulip, is a little. Is that a tulip? Is that what you're calling? Well, it? that's what I'm going to call it. I don't know what it is. Okay. Well, see the tulip, the tulip there. I know we we can't dwell on, but is that a tulip? <laughs> I don't know what else you'd call it. Those are leaves probably, not feathers then. It's called small garden. Yeah. Yeah. It's a it's a tulip. <laughs> All right, Andrea, you're All more right. advanced well, than I am. Okay. We put a large yeah, piece in front of the Civic Center once. I don't know. We, well, and this might be the too Civic wide. Center is now yeah, the Civic Center is now complete on that new side. So that really opens up a very large opportunity. And there's, it, it's such a, the Civic Center is so kind of blah brown. There's no color at all. Okay, that's this would be very we want striking. To consider, but we should probably go to the next slide, don't you think, Angela? Yeah, we'll keep moving along. But yes, we should keep that location in mind, certainly. So next slide. Oh, I, the woman, you know me. I really yeah. like her. Two, so this Two thumbs is, up. I, I really like her. I love her. I want to marry her. 
Okay. Snow Queen is cement and acrylic, and um, I believe, according to the description, that she is lit from the inside, but <gasps> does not I indicate here that that is self-sufficient power source. So I would say, as you're looking at this work, to consider it without the lighting Bill? component present. Bill, I'm having a trouble... The hey, you need to mute your phone, sister. <laughs> oh, I'm not um, a fan of this one. Just not. Why? I, you know, I don't know. She's just. I think she's fucking beautiful. Oh, I'm mm. fucking beautiful. I really like her. All I right. think she'd be great at St. Stephen's. And oh, yeah. She Good idea. represents a, a mother. All right. Sounds good. Okay, next, next slide. slide. This is called Monolith, 110 by 30 by 24 it's steel and bronze. Whoa. No. Mm. No. No. I like it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, next slide. Mm. Point. Also steel and bronze. Oh. This is 64 inches by 16 by 16. Hey, nope. Angie, is this, a, is this an inside one? No, it says that it is outdoors. <laughs> yeah, it's steel and bronze. Why wouldn't it be outdoors? It's yeah, just... but I don't know the 16 by 16. That's tiny. That's just it's... the that's just the width and the height is 64 Five. inches. So it's 5.3 feet. Not nearly six feet tall. Um, yeah, I mean, I would say that that orange is certainly a patina. Um, if it has been outdoors, it's that patina has likely changed, but um, mm -hmm. yeah, it's just no. boring. Boring. Yeah, boring. Yawn. Next slide. <laughs> I love it. I like this one too. Yeah, I, I just long long until table. somebody tries to take that to their house. Uh, I'm yes. sure in it, it should, yes, it it should be bol bolted in, right? Of course. All, all of these pieces have a mounting system, which will secure them. Uh, yes, Susan Horowitz? Um, because it's so inviting, I like it a lot. But would people be able to sit on it? Can they um, eat? you know, on it, I mean, is it that piece of um, usable art? Yeah, same know? question. So it is steel and bronze. Uh, I cannot imagine that the artist would submit this work knowing that it is going to be on public display and that my kids would jump off of it. Right. Uh, you know, <laughs> but I think that uh, certainly that will be written into the contract of all of that liability piece and we'll make it epically clear to this artist that because of no matter where we put it in the public domain that that invites public to interact even if we say do not climb do not sit which we would but yes so I liked it I thought it was unique and different there was um, a time before the flood uh, it reminded me so much. There was an enormous table of wood um, right after the bridge um, that had been put in place and that people just loved to gather around and picnic at. And it was enormous. Um, it was probably a little bit bigger than this, but it was a quite popular place. And then when the flood happened, um, that wood went down the river. But it it's it reminds me of it and it was very pleasing. Yeah, I like this a lot, especially with the thought in mind that you could sit on it and have a picnic or whatever. Right. All right. Okay. All right, next slide. This is bl springy blue skyscraper. It's five feet tall by 13 inches wide by 12 inches deep. Nope. No. Mm. No. Kind of a small guy. I don't like this one so much. No. Anybody feel strongly about this guy? The howling has begun outside, by the way. 
<laughs> Next slide. This one. I like. I, I, love like this one. I like this one a lot. I like this, this one, one too. This is my favorite one. I like it. Okay. Same. Sounds like there's a lot of people who are really interested in this. Yes? Yes. Uh, I really yeah. like it just in and of itself, but especially out of these three cloud related ones in yeah. a row. This is the best yeah. one. Right. Absolutely. I agree. It does look in this in this picture to be quite larger than it is. It's only five feet tall. So uh, okay. certainly placement on a plinth will be yeah. will be necessary. Yep. Good good uh, piece for St. Stephen's. Yeah, nice. Great. Plinth is really fun to say. Next slide, please. No. The one that bothers me about this is it says it's electronics. Electronics, what does it do? I don't, I'm not a fan. Um, <laughs> it's just, electronics just means something else that can break. Maybe, maybe it, li the lightning lights up or something. The lightning strikes if you get too close. It doesn't say in the description what the electronics portion yeah, is. Yeah. It could be sound. Uh, it could be a thunderous sound that came from it. I don't, I mean, that'd be something we'd find out about. Okay, next slide, please. This is Pillars of Society, six feet by 15 by 15, and it is bronze. And we have seen this before. <laughs> no. Interesting concept, but just not very nice to look at. I right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. All right. Next slide, please. I don't understand this piece. This is the serpent waver. I really like it. I don't understand it. By I don't understand it either. Um, the description will... Um, assist a little bit with talking about petroglyphs, et cetera. Right. Yeah, it reminds me of a Kachina doll. So, but what about the uh, the side in the the other picture? What is? I don't. It looks to me like that is a Photoshop version of it placed in situ, and the scale is very wrong. Well, it seems to me that it's one of those things like we see later where. As you go around it, you see different things, you know, yeah. like this side is this uh, cool Kachina doll thing, but then 90 degrees later, it's supposed to be something else, but I, I can't tell what that is. And these are the images that were provided. Yeah. And you, when you're voting, you will see all the images, which, um, you know, sometimes it's the same thing twice, you know. Hey, this is Francis. Um, I just wanted to say, imagine this uh, juxtaposed with the Snow Queen. That could be some interesting context. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's a good idea. And I it's Colorado like the, Yule Marble, which is interesting. Mm -hmm. I like it, but I can understand why somebody wouldn't. <laughs> Angela, do you have, I don't know if you want to answer this question, but um, are you able to tell us whether this is a native artist or not? I, I only ask the question because I think it does have so much uh, relationship to native art that if it's not a native artist, I think it's very problematic. The artist does not state in either their artist statement letter of interest, which will be included for the jury or the description of the work that this person is native. Um, and not that a name ever gives you any clue nope. whatsoever nope. for the reality, but um, that too does not have any indication. Yeah. Um, I will say the artist says that the, the artist's hobby is to hike and look for petroglyphs. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, next slide, please. I like this one. So, this is a transcendent, same stained glass mosaic with a metal base. Yeah, I like this one too. I kind of like the idea of having an artwork for the first time and not have it be all over Colorado before it gets to us and 
from what I've seen from this artist, I like her work, so I think it could be interesting. I like I like it. And of course, if there is a, um, if the jury does vote for one of these unfinished pieces ahead of time, we can always put a stipulation um, of that time. Yeah. That this is, is a very tall piece. Yeah. It's, it's almost four feet on the base and then another eight feet above. So that yeah. you need a space that would take that larger object. Well, that's, that's yeah, it'd be very striking, I think, yeah. We would have to put this in a uh, place that gets a lot of sun. Right, solar panels. Civic Center, there you go. You could go to Civic Center again. Okay. Angela. Oh, yep. Susan, Angela, you want to say? Yes, um, does it say in your description more? I mean, does it move? Uh, there is no indication that it is kinetic. Okay. Um, says solar LED lights bring nightly delight to the sparkle of the stained glass mosaic. Depth is created by metal substrate for strength. Add stained glass contrasting with the patina on the base for a wonderful ju juxtaposition in design for Colorado weather. Nice. Mm -hmm. I, like, I like it a lot. I think it's so different. Um, and and I would have confidence that the artist could have it done and prepared. And I agree. Okay. All right, next slide, please. Migration, transformation, that R should not be capitalized. That's, um, that's my fault. Um, this piece is a finished piece, obviously, and it is also that stained glass mosaic with metal base, standing nine feet tall by four feet wide by two and a half feet deep. So I like all her pieces, and I think she gives us, I think it's two finished stained glass pieces. Mm -hmm. I this, this piece does not have the solar panels or the LED component. Okay. I like the first one that we picked better. The, you know, the George Judson one? Yeah, I yeah. like that one better too. I, I like, like this one, but I like that one better. Yeah. And I really like the whirling dervish, so. Okay. All right, next slide, please. I really like this. I Trinity. love this piece. Yeah, this like Trinity. And I, um, like I this think too. we've had something from this artist before by the museum. Is this the same artist that had uh, her pieces by the museum a couple of years back. Oh, okay. <laughs> I don't know. I'm, I guess this this artist has been included in Art on the Move very very recently. Okay. What's it? It looks so, like the bench. It looks kind of like the bench. I like this yeah. idea. I like this one sort of on in a breezeway. You know, yeah. with like one on one side and two on the other or something. I like so the so you get that surrounded feeling. I like that. Yeah, I agree. This is really nice. Yeah, it's yeah. I really like it. So it sounds like there's a lot of advocacy for this Trinity. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I I probably wouldn't want to have it by the museum again if it were at the museum before the similar one, not this. Right. But. Yeah, makes sense. We absolutely can go back and look at some of those sightings to make sure that we're not duplicating that way. Okay. All right, next slide, please. This is beyond my ability to understand. <laughs> I, I think it's a fly for fly fishing. Yeah. That's what I it thought does, it looked like. It does really look like a lure. Yeah. Um, so it's very, very, very tall, uh, but that's not problematic. It's also quite wide from its longest point to its longest point. So, um, but I did some investigation and we can cite it. Our sightings would be limited, but we can, we can hold it. This is it looks like it could hurt somebody. <laughs> it doesn't, yeah, it does not move me. No, no not at all. That's it's too bad. It wouldn't take much to have made it more interesting and amazing looking. Yeah. 
and color. Yeah. So one, one groovy thing it has going for it is it takes something tiny and then flips it to this really novel giant scale. And so I think that kind of puts you in this like um, interesting headspace to sort of reevaluate everything else around you after you've stopped looking at it. Um, I'm not sure, you know, as far as the aesthetics, but um, I do think it's an interesting headspace. Yeah, good point. Yeah, I think if we were fisher people, we might appreciate it more, but I'm, I'm never enjoyed fishing. <laughs> I, I do say, oh, go ahead, Susan. I do fly fish, and so that's why I, it immediately struck me. Um, but I feel like there's something, not here in town maybe, uh, I just have a memory of of some fly fishing art. Um, but I mean, it's intriguing and I like the headspace comment a lot, uh, but it just wasn't one of my favorites for art in public places, even though I love anything that does with fishing. But. Yeah, the composition is just a little off somehow to me. And I find that the setting in which the piece is photographed is very distracting. I am having a hard time looking at the whole piece. It, I, I have to focus to see the work beyond the shed. Ah, yeah. yeah. So the forest through the trees. The work mm -hmm. the but that might be an indication too that it might be difficult to find a great site because it's so tall, you know, the back, I, I don't know. That's just maybe a, Okay, let's go to the next one. Ancestral totem, concrete and steel. I like it. Yeah, like maybe it. artist. I hear you fine. Peter, mm -hmm. I can't hear you terribly. I ask if this is a native artist or, or if the artist's ethnicity is part of what this is about. The um, the artist's uh, background is not indicated either in the artist's statement uh, or the description at is all. This, is this triangular or just two sides? Well, I'm obviously four sides, but is it triangular? Uh, I believe that it is a re it is rectangular because the the dimension is eight inches by 10 inches. Okay, right. If you look at it right. in the city view, it's uh, narrow. Yeah. And so is it the same on the other side, do we know? Or is it different? These are the only images provided of the detail. Okay, thank you. Uh, Sue, Susan Wallach, our uh, chair is in the waiting room. One moment. Thanks. Well, I like it, but there are things that I like better, so. And when you're ready, Susan, we can move on to the next slide. Chair, can you hear us? Amy, are you back? Yes, I apologize. I'm sorry. Um, I had a glitch. Something happened. My computer became unplugged. Thank you. No I worries. Charged, but it wasn't. So thank you for your patience. We're good, uh, Angela. Yep. Next slide. Thank you. This is double cross, 79 inches, so over uh, over six feet by 36 inches by 21 inches, powder coated steel. Kinetic. I just want to hang on all those handles on the end. Is, is it kinetic or stable? Oh, it's stable. Okay. It looks kind of fun, but at the same time, it's very simplistic. I agree. Yeah. I don't really I like it, but I will. I like the shadow that it casts. If, yeah. it had, if it had colors, it would be more attractive to me. 
different colors. I'm not, I don't like it. Okay, anyone other positive? Okay, next slide, please. This is abundance. It's 69 inches by 39 by 12, core 10 steel and hot rolled steel. So the core 10 is the uh, orange bases and then the hot rolled steel obviously is the is the red. Mm -hmm. I really like this and then I think it's another piece that would do well in St. Stephen's. Okay, anyone else? On the... It's a meh for me, meh. Yeah. This looks kind of whimsical. Looks, I don't know, looks fun. Mm -hmm. Like it. Okay, next slide please. This, this is, is the one I have trouble surprise. with, Angela. Yes, so clearly this is not mixed media on paper. But <laughs> is in fact, is in fact steel and outdoor quarry sculpture clay. Um, and the dimensions are not sorry, well, either. Sorry, Peter, say again. Those are not the dimensions either. All right. Those are also not the dimensions. Uh -uh. <laughs> it is 84 inches tall by 30 inches wide by 17 inches deep. So it is, they, I mean, I imagine the 84 inches obviously is the tallest of the two components. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. I like this a lot. It looks like a cactus garden. I really like this a lot. Yeah, I like it too. It's fun. It's very different. This is Susan. I like it too, but when you say it's very different, I feel like we've had a lot of bead um, clay sculpture. Um, I, I really like it, but I, I, I worry about getting repetitive in that same visual. Okay. Anybody else with comment for Root to Rise? Okay. Next slide, please. Yeah. I like it because it reminds me of people in Longmont. <laughs> yes. I really like this, and I think it would be great at the Recycle Center. They have a big yeah, base there. That's a good idea. Yeah. You would see it as you drive by. I like this a lot. This is great. Yeah. It that's a like good idea. I, I really, it didn't really, I didn't really necessarily like it for any reason but it would fit the Recycle Center really well. It would. Uh, I just think it historically fits Longmont. Mm. Yeah. Um, the fact that it's truck bumpers and that it reminds me of cruising down Maine. Yep. And I think it also appeals to a different audience. Yep. And I think part of being AIPP is to have things that maybe you wouldn't have in your yard, but you know a whole gang of people are going to go, oh, that's the coolest motorcycle. Now, that's the first thing I thought of, too, is, oh, that's the coolest motorcycle. Yeah. I like it because it's, well, I like it, and then it's recycled, and I think it would be popular with kids. Oh, as well as, as, and adults, well, and adults. A lot of adults, especially, I, well, just all kinds of adults. Okay. Do you have a problem keeping kids off of it? At the, at the recycle center when a few years ago I took a picture of the thing that was there and it's really not very, I mean, it's completely accessible, but you have to pull in and park and walk over. I think that it wouldn't be a thing. If we put it there, it wouldn't be a thing that kids would exactly have the ability to climb on. Yeah. yeah. The, the it's more of a drive by important. see it. Isn't that cool? Mm -hmm. Good point. All right. Next slide, please. I love this one. This is with <laughs> wings like eagles. Yeah. Why do I love this one? I have no reasoning behind it. I actually like both of the pieces. I think they're probably by the same person, the next one too. I like both of them. This one's fascinating because the shadow is part of the art. If you look at it from one direction, it's a cowboy. If you look at it from the other direction, it's- So a... true, Noah, so true. Yeah. Yeah. 
And, and I like the texture. The texture is really interesting. So there's two questions I have. If we put it someplace outside, though there are pieces on this that look like they might cut someone. Now that I'm a puppy and a god mama, I'm like, oh, that looks like something a kid would like hurt themselves on. It all depends on how tall the base is. Yeah. Well, the entire piece, of course, is 69 inches. Right. So yes, putting it up on a plinth rather than having it directly on flat concrete would be necessary. Well, I'm five mm -hmm. feet tall, so I'm 62 inches. So that's a little, that's like almost six feet. Yeah, it's five and three quarters feet. Thanks, Randy, for your math. <laughs> if uh, children or damage to society is a real uh, concern with this one, it might be a good fit for the indoor and then have a specific light, you know, illuminating it. I don't know, though. We don't have that much for indoor, Noah. I thought we talked about that whole room that needs uh, art in it. Yeah, the lobby, the big lobby. We do have the um, the safety and justice building. That's correct. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. This has to be put in a corner so the shadow works right, correct? Right. So that safety and justice building is that place where no one can go because uh, in the building uh, because the security guard is there, mm -hmm. but can see it from outside the outside windows. That yeah, it's got cool. three wind on three sides you can see it so there might be a lot of light in there to throw the shadow mm -hmm. okay next slide this is wings of the wind nine feet by four feet by two feet steel plate this one reminds me a lot of the piece we have deliverance out on what is it county it, line road defiance defiance yeah Mm -hmm. Okay, not it's, the same artist though. It's it is this is not the same artist as that. Yeah, but the the subject matter reminds me a lot of that piece. Very this very similar. And also the donated piece that's by Sunset Park, the Sunset Pool, the eagle there. The eagle, that's uh -huh. bronze. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. But I I like it. <laughs> so you know what I like that it looks like a real eagle. It does. <laughs> so many eagles, they don't have this like, I w I'm trying to show you guys, but I can't. They don't have that chin. Mm-hmm. Okay. Next slide, please. This is Epiphany, 136 like by 89. So it's tall and and long. It makes I find this junkies. That's just me. Yeah, I have my notes on this say tortured horse. Yeah. <laughs> yeah it's, a, it's cool. It's very Picasso-esque. It's like something out of Guernica, but it's got that whimsy. It's like it's it's um it's again got that like kind of nice um, crossroads to it. Thank you, Francis, for being positive. I love you so much. No, it's I think it's I like it too. It's nice and bright and like she said, whimsical and you know, we have to think about children someone mentioned tr children earlier um and uh, you know the younger population would have a good time with it no it that's, makes me laugh that, is, I that was the same thought i had that it looks picasso-esque and looks like guernica and uh but it's it's a nice color it would add color to the right spot um but you need a place that can take a big piece of metal yeah, yeah so the artist calls out picasso directly as inspiration ah okay I think it would it look, look nice like at like library or something. It looks like Puff the Magic Dragon to me. It does. It does. <laughs> yeah, Angela, I agree. Puff, should we sing it? No. 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 <laughs> no. 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 Uh, Angela, do we still have a spot by the Jester's Dinner Theater where we had this giant um, tool? Oh, that's, so, a, that's a good so idea. So just south of Jester's? Yeah. yeah. Oh, wow. Um, yeah. So, yes. What a great I think idea. That yeah. we I don't know the Jesters. I know them very well because they were, they're my daughter's godparents. I don't know if they would dig it, but we could try. So, we could investigate that space for a temporary piece. For permanent, we would not because of a future 
intentions for that lot. Sure. Uh, so, but yes, we could look into that. Yeah. yeah. I think that spot needs a lot of color and this would really. Could I check in one other little piece is uh, I think the blue horse at the at DIA for better or for worse is sort of become Thank a you. Colorado icon. So I, I feel like there's sort of like a nice little callback there. Yeah. Yeah, this one's one of my favorites because it's so expressive and silly, but not literal. Exactly. And yes, I think it would go excellently, you know, if we're shipping or pairing these, it would go great with Angry Woman, which is like five down. And that's why I hate this one, just because uh -huh. you love it. I'm like, I, I do not like DIA Man. Um, I do. He scares me. She's missing the demon eyes, though. She needs the red eyes. Yeah. No, I, I love the DIA. He's actually quite, quite gorgeous. If you look at his eyes at the top, um, the artist did a beautiful job of, with folding his eyelids. You see it? Yeah. He's All right. actually gorgeous, but golly. Okay, we're going to keep moving. So the next one is, next slide please, Gregory, Gregory Fee, oh my gosh, right, rather, Slice of Life, Slice of Life is the next piece. <laughs> no. Gra glazed ceramics, steel, cement. Boring. Motor and go. Boring. 43 inches tall. Boring. Okay, any add? Really? what do you think? I like it. It's, it's okay. I mean, it's okay. Yeah, just okay. There's yeah. better. If we had lots of slots to fill, I would say sure. Yeah. But I think we have better choices. I do exactly. too. I agree. I agree. Okay. Totally, Miss Tiger. Okay. We'll, let, we'll move on to the next slide, the kiss, which is silver powder coated well. I, I want to like charcoal it. finish. It's not very tall. It's uh, 47 inches, so just under four feet tall by 16 by seven. So it would require a plinth. No. I like the, the er, much earlier metal one we saw with the three interconnected pieces more than this. I don't Same know. Art. This, this could be nice, but it almost looks like somebody dented it in parts. And I don't know if that's on purpose. I'm, I guess it's on purpose, but I, I feel like it, it takes something away from what could be a very beautiful piece. I love this piece, but you're right. Well, no, that's just my opinion. Out of it. Thank you. Okay, next slide. No, no, no. I, like I want to climb on this. I can't imagine putting seven-year-olds near it. Um, yeah, and it's 119 inches tall itself. So it's a- I hate this one, sorry. I want to climb right up it. No. Okay. Anyone strongly for this? Okay, next slide, please. Third degree, 96 by 28 by 22. I hate this one too, so no. shut up. No, I don't like it. Strongly for this one? Does it move? It looks like it moves to me. It does not say in the uh, description that it's kinetic. Hmm. I was tempted to suggest that for the Justice Building, but <laughs> Just on the basis of the name. <laughs> Good one, Peter. <laughs> All right, next. <laughs> just, slide, just tell please. the judge we've got an artwork for you. We're going to give you the third degree. I love this, except no. for him. I want to. Um, a couple of years ago, we had the on Wire the Man in St. Stephen's, yep. and it was instantly vandalized. Instantly, people pulling on the wires and everything. I don't know if we could guarantee this one not being I love him. damaged. I'm not sure all of the materials because I don't know what industrial objects mean. Exactly. Yeah. Um, you don't have a site by the service center, do you? Say one more, piece, one more time. I said, do you have a site by the service center? They kept it just because of the name. <laughs> I think the industrial objects are the plugs like things yeah. that the wires go into on the on the stem. 
Yeah. But I feel like it needs those little beads, like the little kids' toys. Yeah. yeah. I like this piece, but I don't know if we could display it publicly without it being destroyed. I think Marsha also makes a good point. If we have it next to a building that's occupied pretty regularly, that might be the way to uh, ensure some safety, but. Uh, the library or the Justice Center? Yeah. Mm. So I really think that we need to start putting plate uh, pieces where we wouldn't think that they should go. Okay. Does anybody else have something strong about this one? Okay. You disagree? No. I. I. Th um. Yeah. I think we can find places for all of these things. I love him. Look at him. Look at her. She looks like a bumblebee to me. How about you guys? She looks like she forgot what she was doing. Whoever made it, him. I love her. All right. All right. Next slide. This is, oh, back one. There we go. Angry Woman is 60 by 66 by 64 and is painted steel. This is also the only this view that I have of yeah. this work. So um, I can't I can't articulate what it looks like from the other side in the round. This is this is okay. massive. It's five feet square, roughly. Yeah. It's just okay. It kind of reminds me of a laundry rack. <laughs> Where you dry your clothes. And it's painted, not powder coated? Painted steel. Which may mean like the new automotive paints and um, yeah, mm -hmm. more durable holding up for Colorado rather, weather rather than the powder coat. Mm -hmm. I hate it. I'm not sure about <laughs> the title. I mean, I don't. No, I, the title. Totally, you know me, totally piss me off. Come on. Yeah, I mean, it, it's kind of offensive from a woman's yeah. standpoint because we're not square. Yeah. Sorry, but I'm done. Is there anyone else advocating, Noah? I quite like the, the shape and the aggressiveness of it. So as a, I'm a feminist. So what do you think about them him, her calling it the woman thing? Oh, I don't, yeah, that's fine. I don't I, don't, I saw it as the, if the artist is female, this is just, she was angry when she made it. Exactly. It looks pretty sharp, like you cut your foot on the place where the red comes off of the concrete there. Yeah. Well, well we would have a, a, a different. Yeah, hopefully that'd be bolted yeah. down. We you kicked it, maybe. Feminists aren't angry. We just want to change things, guys. All right. Shall we move on? Mm hmm All right. Next slide, please. This is Home Away. Six nope. feet, one and a half feet by one and a half feet. It's steel patina. So uh, what you can and... Yo, yeah, you can see it. I have to move my... So it's home in one way and then away in the other way, right? Yeah. No. What's the point? I just, nothing. No. Okay. So that concludes the pieces that were designated for. I like it. So I'll vote for it. <laughs> so um, again, when you're looking at these, consider mm -hmm. your options of, of really voting for seven strong works, whether outdoor or indoor. So um, yeah, it doesn't have to be one or the other. So moving along to pieces designated for indoor space. Oh, here is a just quick little view to remind you of what the indoor space looks like. So from the uh, fire hydrant or um, extinguisher over past where the skeletons are, that's about 16 foot wall. Yeah. So we selected, um, and tell me if I'm incorrect, uh, Art on the Move committee, that if we selected some works that were work on paper or anything that was framed, we would ask the artist to lend us 
either a series of work of the same aesthetic or from the same series to fill the entire wall for the, the full stipend. Yes. So two D artists exactly. would give us yes. five True. works for exactly loan right. for the length of the year. And those five or however many fill 16 feet long um, would be, would receive the thousand dollars. And the next slide. This is the two images of the indoor space. Um, I should, I wish I would have gone over there to get new images before all of this business happened. But um, so if you can imagine, it's, it's quite cavernous, but it's very visible from the outdoors. So uh, when you're in that, that entry way, uh, it's quite visible from a number of different uh, perspectives. So an installation work, or there's a large wall uh, that work could be displayed. So, right. so next slide. I like that a lot. Me too. I like this a lot, but is it backlit? Yeah, I think it is. Yeah, it I'm is a sucker for anything that's backlit neon, and this is super cool. And like, <laughs> I want. really like this, but is there any electricity on that wall? There is. Yeah, and like you said, if, if that interior space is visible from the outdoors, especially if you lower the lights in that room, walking by would be really... Hey, Angie, call yeah. Mayor. Call Mayor Bagley. He'll do it. No, I, I really love... Um, I can see it on that wall. Really, just... Yeah, it's cool. Very cool. beautiful. And they're huge, too. It looks like the size yeah, of... Yeah, they're gigantic, which is... Yeah, cool. I like it. So the artist, I'm about to cry, but yeah. So yeah, the but... artist says that the sculptures um, are lit with LED inside each sculpture. Cool. Um, yeah, I think I think. Yeah. Does it need electricity then, or just batteries? Good question, Sydney. I'm betting on batteries, is what I think. No, we have to change it all the time. It, yeah, it doesn't say, and it's, um, so I imagine that, yeah, they're independently powered. And they're probably timed. Excellent. So, Sydney, how long have you been in Longmont? 20 something years. So, do you remember when they had the color fountain in front of the city building? No. So, <laughs> really fast, we had a color building or a color fountain from the city building and my parents took us to swim there <laughs> all right we're gonna move on ready please okay next slide please now this is the dance painting of an unknown memory and abstract painting with limited colors and again um you know these were all submitted independently but uh, if you voted for one, then you would receive the same aesthetic or series, et cetera, and the committee <laughs> would get to basically curate that 16-foot wall. So That is a dark, boring wall, and I don't think these will do anything to improve it. Agree. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Okay. All right, moving on. Next, please. I love that one. This is, yeah, the you are the dreamer of the dreams and to where you, your, your dreams are. Um, 36, 48 by one and a half. So they're, you know, three feet high, four feet high. So they're That's pretty okay. striking I think, and large. I think this is very calming for that kind of um, building, Safety and Justice Center. And if I were, um, if I had committed a crime, I would want to look at these while I was waiting for justice to be served. <laughs> okay. so, um, they fit really well with, uh, I think we were asked when we first went out there to look at the, the site, um, we were asked to consider trauma-informed environments and these definitely adhere to a lot of those guidelines. Yeah, like, yeah. A, like you'd find in a those, those would look great on that wall. It looks like they're crying. And it is an opportunity for us to get the display mechanism put up so we can continue to treat the wall going forward, which certainly uh, I think this adheres more of what um, Justice Frick was asking, Judge Frick was asking. Um, so I would, yeah, I would absolutely agree with that. 
Angela, are the 48 inch measurements tall or wide? So the first one is 24 by 48, so it's two feet tall by four feet long. And then the second one is three feet high by four feet long. So okay. they'll fit that space quite well. Okay. All right, next slide, please. No. No, you missed uh, one. Then the soul can hope. You missed one. Oh, what did I miss? Higher than the soul can hope. So this is a 48, so it's four feet squared. No. No, Angela, there was another another blue one that was tall. In the in the ex, in the slide presentation I got. There was one called is a Where Your Dreams Are. It might no, be higher than the soul can hope. That's oh, that one. is this one. Never mind. You're fine. Actually, I think this one goes with the last two. It could very well, yeah. That's true. It is the same artist. Mm. Oh, okay. Looks like paint can it is to me. Yeah. I like do. it. I like it. With the other two, I would like it. I don't like yeah. it on its own for some reason. With the other two, it splits up the the other two very nicely. Yeah, that's what I think, but not by itself. I don't know why. Oh. It doesn't do anything for me. Right. Okay, next slide. No. I find these colors garish. It looks like bad fabric. The 80s. I don't like it either. I, I think absolutely it's cool. love it. got a great Pink Floyd reference in there. I don't like it at all. It's They're very different. Definitely a, a lot more, um, there's a lot of energy in them. I think if we were trying to bring a space up, they yeah. would be brilliant. So where are we going to put this? Yeah, it's nice. It's just, I think it's the wrong location. I don't think it works, but I think it's energizing and maybe needed in another place, but not where we want to go. Yeah, I love the energy, but uh, but not for the justice end. No. Yeah. Okay. okay. Next slide, please. Obviously the same same artist here. Same thing. I mean... Yeah, I use some. I like that one better, actually. Yeah, I like this one better, but by it itself. Be, it would be good in a youth center or a daycare center. Or if oh, you smoked God. a lot of weed, it would be really <laughs> Okay, next slide. Uh-oh. So this is a series, Rhapsody in Blue. Acrylic on canvas, There's they're 48 tall by 36 wide, so four feet high by seven, or I'm sorry, four feet high by three feet wide. Are you guys, doesn't it relax you? I like the other blue ones better. Really? Yeah. Well, I like these blue ones better. Okay. I, I, I like all three of these for the Justice Center because, again, Excuse it's me. sort of calm. I'm like the most excitable person. I, I guess you guys couldn't guess that. Um, as my cat comes in. I love this. Okay, let's try the next slide. This is okay. the first that was offered in the series. I like that one better just That's because of the color. Amazing. Wouldn't you guys agree? Mm -hmm. Now this one is taller. It's 48, but it's not as wide. So 24. So they do change in size a little bit. Mm -hmm. It's the only one that has red in it. I like the different can color. Can they use this to expand the Justice Center, Ange? Say one more time. Could they make this to expand to the Justice Center? I don't quite follow. Resize it. I don't think so. To no. the Justice Center. I mean, yes, that would be the only place where we, at That's this point in time, okay. indoors. Cool for the Justice Center? I still don't understand. Yeah, it would be in the Justice Center. Okay. I do think this would be great for the Justice Center. Oh, do I think? Yeah. On the committee, I don't get a say. <laughs> Yes, you darling. No. All right. Okay. <laughs> Let's move on. No. 
So this is three views of CHV. And so the entire piece, of course, is the 152. And then the height is 48. It reminds me of a cell block. I thought we were supposed to be making them feel better. I like this one because I like the way they move and change heights. All right. Hey, Angela? Yeah. Uh, so I, I know you'd probably offer it if you had it, but okay. is this like a paint on, on clear acrylic? Is this cut acrylic? Is it dimensional? Yeah, all it says is I like this one. I think wait, it's. Wait, 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 wait. Let's hold on, hold on. Um, I think it's flat. I think it's flat too. Uh huh. Yeah, it's just one, one, one inch. The depth of the That's canvas. The depth. But it's the, oh. the the it's visually moving. I I like this. Uh, yeah, I there's like that definitely it's really long, no indication really of. Yeah, I am. It's not clear. Um, I, I, I don't. I do think that it is one. It is. It is flat on plexiglass, and the plexiglass is one inch. And I think it's mm -hmm. pink plexiglass, but I. It is not clear here. There is something happening where there are, I think, nails at the bottom of it. Do you see that yeah. in the image? And yeah. there's kind of a, there's a shadow there. Yeah. Uh-huh. Um, next slide. Now, this is the same artist, and it says plexiglass and resin. So, um... This is tiny. This I is think very small. Thing to look at this one and the next one, I really appreciate. I would like them, but they're they're really small. They're only eight inches tall. Right, and also if we're oh no no, no. they're it's eight feet long. That's not correct. It's thirty four inches high, and the entire installation is eight feet long. Okay. Thank you. Um, again, if we're putting this in a justice center where people are potentially facing incarceration, I don't think a series of tiny rooms is. I great. know. I, <laughs> that I agree. Great. I agree with you, Noah. Is a very good point. <laughs> that's, that's exactly what I thought when I saw it. Too many of those look like cells. Mm -hmm. Okay, next slide. <laughs> Same. Same thing Same. here. Same thing. Okay. And it's called 2020 Life Cycles. That's so depressing. <laughs> Winner. Okay. Next, I like it. Next. Next slide. I like that. I love it. So, I think um, great there. This would be an installation in that front area of, of safety and justice. Yes. Wasn't this just at the firehouse? Yes. At the firehouse there, yeah. Yeah. I really like it. Okay. Next slide. This makes me think of nooses. Yeah, no. It makes so, me. Uh, um, I'm not sure that I got all of the images for this, but it too is a very large work, very similar to the last one. It's 14 feet long and nine feet tall. It just makes me look like somebody didn't clean up after they did a project. <laughs> you know, yeah. they forgot to. Get the this is not my favorite of these three. No, me neither. Okay, next slide. So, uh, real quick, Angela, are these yeah. were, were these the ones that were community created or had community involvement at Firehouse? Um, while I think possibly she does not, uh, the artist does not say that here. It, it doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the next slide. I like the first one better, but I like this. I like the first one better too. Mm -hmm. Definitely different material. So this is um, certainly held to the wall, whereas the other uh, was more suspended. 
zip uh -uh. ties are not a good idea. Uh -uh. That's handcuffs. Right, my thought too. Yeah. Can we see the first one again? Two back? Sure. That one. Uh, I really Susanna. like it. It has zip ties as well. Um, I think this one is more appealing because the sections are bigger. It's got color in it too. It's, it's, you know, it's got the blues and, and I, I just think it's real organic. It reminds me of the monster in Stranger Things, so I don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> it does. All right. Yeah, I, I don't like it personally myself. I'm trying to like it because everyone likes it, but. You know, I, no, no, no. I like it, but I wouldn't be disappointed if we didn't vote for this one. Yeah. yeah. Peer pressure. Considering the venue. Mm. Yeah, I, I think it would look great at, in the venue, but. Okay, do we have, need more discussion about this artist's work? No. Um, just really quick, am I remembering correctly that we looked at something similar last year and we sort of thought that maybe when the Civic Center came back online, those big cavernous spaces might be something that we looked at, even though it's not formally on the table right now. Maybe we should expand our, our thinking a little bit beyond just um, the waiting room there at the, the Justice Center. Uh. So the artist, which you did go under contract with last year for that piece was invited back. And this is in fact, that artist. Uh, yes. So we invited that artist saying that to accommodate a work that we wanted to install last year, that this is what we were able to uh, be able to work with and invited this person uh, knowing and spelling out the exact space. And this is what the artist proposed. Uh -huh. we, we made sure that we made right by that person here. Yeah. But I'm a little put again, off by, sorry, go ahead. No, it's okay. But um, obviously the, so the artist did know the space and um, you know, to, and the work that was submitted previously was not submitted. Yeah. I'm a little put off by what Peter said that the zip ties look like hand, the handcuffs they use now. And uh, I think that that might be. Yeah, but could you really tell? Can you really tell? I don't know from these. Yes, I, I, I think you look the close up. It, it's clear that there's zip ties. Yeah. yeah. Is it? Okay. They might be little ones. Ah. Oh. Okay. All right, let's move past this one then. Oh, I love this one. Yeah, I, love I love this one too. I yeah. love this one. Love yeah, it. I think this artist is really great. I like all three pieces. Me too. I like all three of them. I agree. I love all three of them. Uh, my only concern with this work is that because it says zero inches, we would need to make sure that this artist is prepared to have the work mounted and presentation ready. Okay. So that would be a stipulation to uh, presenting this work. Yeah. So that indicates that it's on flat paper instead of on a canvas? Exactly, exactly. And um, a magnet mount or some sort of mount that museums would use to display flat work will not be conducive for that space, number one, for protection, and number two, for, for theft. So even though it's a safety and justice building, um, we would want it framed yeah. or mounted in some way. They made mm -hmm. minimalistic frames we could fit it in. Where yeah. would we put it? On the wall in the safety and justice building. Really? Well, right yeah. now. I, I, I just have a comment it being in the safety and justice center. It's people of color and it just, I don't want to send the wrong message because Lately, people of color have been getting a ra the raw end of the deal in justice. Lately? Uh, <laughs> more lately, lately than the last, the last 400 what years. What people of color that are going into our justice centers they're, right now? They're, they're not black people. I think it highlights uh, people of color in a really positive way, though. I don't think Me too. images are negative in any fashion. I and totally agree, best. but we're not honoring our Latinx people. Well, I really... I really like the, the attitude that comes. It's very positive and, and dignified 
to me, even with all the color and stuff, it's like a true individual to me. I agree. I love the, I think the works are really nice. I'm just not sure it's the right place for them. Okay. We don't have black people in Longmont, folks. I wish we did. And no. I'm going to be that well. person that's going to like advocate. Um, we have 25% uh, Mexican people in our country or in our county. And why are we doing this? Well, because it's a nice piece of art. I thought we were picking art. Okay. That's, uh, that's so right. let's I think, continue because we're we're getting we're running a little late and it's almost nine. We're almost an hour over. So let's. Okay, you're right. I'm, I'm, I am supposed to do that. So okay, next. Yeah. Next. Yep. Sorry. Next slide. I love this too. I uh, love also it. a wonderful work of art, I think. Oh, yes. I just love the face. Was, and the composition is beautiful. She is so gorgeous. She and is. Piece is beautiful. She's beautiful. Okay. Friends, I'm sorry. I have a stop. I'm going to hop off. Okay. I do too. All right. Next slide, please. This is my least favorite, but I like it. And I love the title and the two love birds. <laughs> yeah, I agree. I think it's the, the least of uh, effective of those three. Yes. I do, but now I get it more. <laughs> mm -hmm. What do you think, And? I would love to see some um, work in the safety and justice building. I would. Yeah, I, I like all three of them. I think they're just. You know I love this because it includes everything I was just talking about. Okay. All right. I love that he's keeping score. I'm not keeping score. No, boy. no, no. That, in that last picture, there was little hash marks on the man's side. <laughs> <laughs> so these next uh, couple works are by the same artist. I just couldn't make the slides fit them correctly. So uh, 60 by 60, they're quite large. Acrylic on canvas. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Average to me. We've yeah. got better choices. Yeah. I think the blue would blend in with that fabric wall, but I don't know if that's a plus. Yeah, exactly. Okay. All right, next slide. Yeah. That's pretty cool, though, again. The three together look kind of nice. So, again, this is the same artist. Mm -hmm. 60 by 60 by 2. I like this one better than the other one. <laughs> I. I like the movement, but still. I still think we have better choices. Exactly. It's it's just average okay. to me. Okay, next slide. This I like the name comment. of this one. Yeah, the name. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and this is six feet six feet long by four four feet tall, so it's quite large. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay, next slide. We're not Are in Boulder. Uh, this no. is cast bronze no, you and- have to stop that, that's racist. I think that this is a panel that goes on a wall, but it um, it's not clear. So I'm, because of its size, I'm presuming that it's cast bronze wall hanging. Yeah, I think the texture is really interesting on this. The work is interesting, but why, why do we have a boulder panorama? Well, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, right. I would agree. Okay, next slide, please. I like this. So this also is back lit. They're How do we do that? Mustaches. Reminds me of Batman. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I like the 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 feather colored LED ones better. Yeah, that's yeah, like something that should be on the wall of a car dealership. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. yeah. Oh my gosh, she's my yeah. Okay, yeah. and last slide, last slide. 
don't understand the point of this. I didn't. Oh my god, it's Amy. <laughs> yeah, I I kind of didn't get it either. So. Oh, but I'm not nearly as pretty as that as uh, Ezra is. Right. So. Like a lot of the other ones, I really appreciate okay. this one, but I don't see it making sense in uh, the Justice Building. Exactly. Yes, I agree. I mean, it's lovely, but it it doesn't suit what we're trying to do, I don't think. Are you even allowed to smoke in the justice system, in the building? <laughs> I'm sure you are not. <laughs> Thank God! Yeah. All right, so okay. um, with that, we have our last citizen comment portion of the evening. <laughs> which will be four quick minutes and then we'll come back and then we'll have some commissioner comments and then we'll put this baby to bed. If All right. Angela, yes. actually, um, it appears that we were having some difficulty with the audio. So uh, I was not able to troubleshoot that while I had to drive the slideshow. So okay. I uh, knew that we were almost done and I went ahead and ended the stream for now. So at this point, um, they won't see that message. So you could continue as you would like. Oh. Okay. We're going to have some people to talk that to saves us. us four minutes. I'll get them. Okay. So um, with that, if, if anyone has anything uh, or a last thing you need to say to advocate for something you feel very strongly about, and then we'll move on to commissioner's comments and then tidy it up. Is there, um, when, are, when are we going to be voting on these? Um, I'm going to be sending you, hope, I have all of your passwords and jurying sheets and instructions ready to go. Uh, I was going to do a quick test myself mm -hmm. just to see if I run into any bumps in the road tomorrow and then hopefully tomorrow afternoon. Um, so I have to tell you something, Angela. You have to send it to me before I send it to them. I'm sorry, say one more time. So we have to all like agree, right? You all have to vote on your top ones and then whatever shakes out with the high scores, yeah. that's how it goes. Is it okay. rank choice voting or is it just winner take all? <laughs> it is the top seven or five to seven pieces. Um, and then I'll bring those to you and hopefully those artists will agree to participate, and if one falls off, the one that goes from the bottom will will just go up the ladder. The reason I was asking about the time frame was: is there any chance you could get um, a feel from uh, the artists? Well, in my case, I'm interested in one, but the artists that didn't present finished pieces, what? You know, are they working on that? You know, what's some kind of time frame as to, you know, this would take me four weeks from now or I'm half done with it or yes, I can meet the end of June or whatever you're, can you get any sure. kind of indication on that? Sure, so now would be a great time. So I will open up the jurying still tomorrow. I'll give you a week to finish. In the meantime, great. I can ask any artist any question. So that will be one of them. Uh, asking that artist if it was approved uh, and what that timeline would look like for finishing. Great. Certainly any other, and, and of course, if you think of these questions uh, while you're jurying or mm -hmm. in mid-jury. Mid we're trying to figure out your haircut. Well, mm -hmm. but um, now would be great if anybody has any specific question for any artist, et cetera. Okay. I have a question, Angela. Yes. Um, are we picking five to seven outdoor and two indoor or? Total, five, five to seven total, your favorite. Oh, indoor and outdoor, five to seven. Total, total. Okay. How, okay. Many, how many spaces are there at St. Stephen's? Five. five. I think we have nine, but we're only at three? I think there's five. Why are we so limited this year? Yes, why are we so limited? Well, I don't understand. We've gone and up how? to 12. So um, this, that's a good question. In the charter uh, in Longmont, the Longmont Art, Art in Public Places Charter, 
you are limited to spending $7,500 every year on art on loan pieces, total. You are bound by that. Uh, at the beginning of this year, we agreed the $1,000 stipend was what yes. we were publicizing for the artists. So at the very most, at $1,000 stipend, you can choose seven. Can we ratify that? This year we had eight, oh, and the year before that we had no, nine. Can we ratify that until 2021? Uh, <laughs> yes, if, well, oh, no, no, no. You, you, your $1,000 stipend is what was posted in the RFQ. You're bound to that this year. No, the, the 7,500 we can vote. To. That takes an, out, an act of city council. Yes. Mm -hmm. Not going I, th there. I think um, I think it was it's seventy five hundred or twenty five percent of your annual budget, whichever. No, I would like to hear right. what you guys would like to ratify. Seventy five hundred is your max. Okay. So what are you guys upset about? Well, we I think everybody was hoping to get a few more, but yeah. it sounds right. like this is what we have to do. Right. We have a lot of money, kids. It's, so in terms of the Justice Center, I mean, that would literally, that's probably going to take up three or, or two. Or, yeah, or no, would, those three can go together. Right. Yes, so an, uh, we would ask an artist to loan a series. So, so what do you want? Stipend for the want, whole wall. And then we'll figure it out. Got it. Did, am I, was that clear for everyone? Yes. Okay. But we can we can vote for two indoor pieces, but they would go in the Justice Center, correct? Yes, and then we would yes. only have five for the rest for and that. And keep in mind that you don't have to vote for an indoor piece at all. It right. can be all right. outdoor. Or we could just if, vote for one indoor piece. Yes, that's yes. true. Right. Or that could be a separate project. Maybe we purchase. Maybe we purchase one of those. Or it could be in the future. In the future, right, in the future. Art on the Move wants to transition and turn um, an Art on the Move two-dimensional and an Art on the Move one, you know, three-dimensional. Or if you want to purchase a piece in perpetuity for that space, right. that's fine. Yeah, absolutely. Angela is totally right. You guys, we have to shut up. We just need to calm down. We have no art right now. We are so, lucky to even be meeting right now. So we're a little bit bound by the way that the call for entry was written. And of course that was pre COVID. So we're, we're, we're bound by some limitations, but so vote for something indoor. If you feel strongly about it, if it doesn't make the top seven, uh, then we don't have to treat the space at this time. So if you feel strongly that we should, uh, have St. Stephen, St. Stephen's full of work this year, then vote for those. Mm -hmm. Uh, so I'm your chair, and Angela is my, we've, we've talked about this. You guys, we have to be quiet and just get our art passed. So I think, but I think we're at the end of this conversation for this point, unless anyone has any other comments or questions for me at this time. And again, if you have other questions later, you can absolutely just email me or call me directly and we can handle it that way. I so, just have one quick question. Yeah. Which is, we're limited this year to the $7,500, but next year we could, we could write the RFQ or we could do more for, for Art on the Move? Uh, we could do more artists by giving them less money, yes. Um, we could go to city council to change the charter. No. Um, but that is how the charter is written. And I will make sure to send um, it to you and the language so you can read it. Oh, okay. thanks. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Any other questions that way? Nope. Awesome. You Thank guys you. are such troopers. All right. So thanks. the very, very last thing before someone's going to make a motion to adjourn this meeting would be are there, are there com hours ago. commissioner comments? Uh, I just wanted to say thank you, Angela. You did a great job in, in uh, moving this meeting along. So very good. Yes. Thank big, you. And, and it's to uh, Susan Wallach and Lucienne who are with the city staff and the city clerk's office. Um, 
big, big thanks to them for great making thanks to them. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you for your much. patience. <laughs> yeah. All right. All Motion right. to adjourn, anyone? Move, move adjournment. I second. Yeah, like a few hours ago, but motion to adjourn. Okay, I'm, d I'm doing uh, Peter and I think I got Yvette was too. All right. The meeting right now. Bye. Thank you. Nice seeing everybody. I think it was Bye. Randy. Good yeah. to see you all. Yes, definitely. Was it Randy? Sure. Oh, so maybe next was year, it? next month we can do it live, maybe. It Wouldn't would be happen? great. Everyone stay safe. We're all working on it. Mm -hmm. Bye, everybody. Bye. 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 Stay safe.